Temperatures good, wind not good. Southwesterly winds, 18 miles per hour. It's gusting a lot higher than that, I would think, looking at these flags as we look at Jim Mora in his fourth season as head coach of the Colts. And across the way, in his first year as the head coach of the Bills, is Greg Williams, whose team has really taken a hold of his systems now as they get into this first year under his new offensive and defensive schemes and they're playing a lot better football. You're right and it's finally starting to take hold Don. This team's starting to get a little more confident. They've played better and better in the preceding weeks. Now they just need to put it all together and try and come away with a win. But they've got to do it against a team that thumped them badly in Indianapolis a few weeks ago. Real badly. Now there is Terrence Wilkins who's been hurt. He's back in the lineup. This is a sensational returner. Against the Jets this year, he ran back a punt 78 yards for a touchdown. So he could set the pace early with a big return. Taking off with a wind at his back, Mormon drives the ball into the end zone, and here comes Wilkins. He's across the 10. Wilkins has a gap, and Wilkins turns the corner. There's a blocking foul on Indianapolis. The play comes back. As uh, Avion Black was down to make the stop, it was a 34 yard return, but there was a blocking foul on the Colts, so they'll start deep in their own end. And there's nothing like starting off a, off a team, off a game, starting with a penalty on kickoff. Holding, 51, return team, at the distance, first down. Linebacker Mike Morton is called for the uh, blocking foul, number 51. So the Colts, uh, you'll remember the Colts fans certainly will, they fell behind the Bills early as we look at Peyton Manning on September 23rd. But right now it's Peyton Manning at the helm and he brought him back on September 30. 23rd at the RCA Dome. You look at his numbers. The interceptions have been a problem, nine of them. Yeah, the, Col is. the Colts would love to get off to a fast start here today, Don. They didn't do it against the Bills at home. We'll see if they can do it on the road. Manning and the Colts working into the win. Here is the give to Dominique Rhodes, and he is stopped by the Bills at the 11-yard line. The great edger and James not playing today because of a knee hyperextension suffered against Kansas City in this spread formation that the Colts go to now. On second down at almost 10. This is a strong gusting win that Manning is throwing into. They go to a draw play and Rhodes finds room. He bounces outside and Rhodes takes it across the 20 yard line. Beautifully done. He looks to have enough for a first down. Rhodes delivering a big early run. They get the Colts a first down. Now Manning with that patented system. Checking off at the line. Rob noise is going to be a factor. Here is Rhodes again coming at the Bills, and he is stuck hard. Aaron Schobel, an undersized but very quick defensive end, 94, hit him head on. You know, Don, you're going to talk a big key in this game is going to be that guy right there, Dominique Rhodes. How do you fill the shoes of a guy like Edger and James? And really, the key is you don't try to. Just do what they ask you to do. Do it to the best of your abilities. This is a good football team. Dominique Rhodes knows one thing. He doesn't have to win it. He just has to not lose it for the Colts. Well, he's made some great runs, though, Steve. He had 10 carries coming into this game, 14.3 yards per run, and he got 10 on that first down run. He can break big plays. He did against Kansas City. Manning dropping now on second down. The rush is on, and Manning goes down inside the 15-yard line. Bryce Fisher from the Air Force Academy gets his third sack of the season and now Manning and the Colts Steve have to fire into the wind long distance. Well Bryce Fisher just completely goes right by Tarek Glenn right in between Glenn and McKinney and there's no excuse for this he just rips underneath and Peyton Manning has no chance. Bryce Fisher one of the things about him he's an older guy as a rookie Tom Moore knows that. But Bryce Fisher is a guy that was in the Air Force Academy for a long time before he got the opportunity to play, and he's excited about getting a chance. Very good young player. Manning now on third down, takes a look, dumps it off over the middle. It's a screen to Rhodes, and he breaks it, and he is all the way out to the 31-yard line. A spectacular play by the Colts as they catch the Bills in an all-out pass rush, screen the ball to Dominique Rhodes over the middle and get 15 yards. And that's what you do to a, against an aggressive defense. Watch as Manning comes back. They let the guys come through. There's only three men rushing, and that gives the offensive linemen more space to sort out who their secondary blocks are. And the offensive line of the Colts goes out and picks up the right guys. 
as we have a actually a Buffalo Bill down on the field right now. Looks like it might be Keon Carpenter, the free safety. So while uh, Keon's attended to, there's a break in the action. Both moving the ball when they have to. Don Crickey with Steve Tasker as we look now at the replay. Keon Carpenter, he was really hit by his own guy there, uh, Tyrone Roberts in 92. But uh, Keon seemed to be all right when he walked off the field. Now it's first 10 10 for Peyton Manning and the Colts. Dump pass, open man. And moving with the ball is Rhodes again, so he looks every bit in this early going as good as. Edger and James, who he's replacing, who's one of the great players in the league. It's a 10 yard gain. It's been all roads. You got to tip your hat to Tom Moore, offensive coordinator for the Colts. He's getting him into the game plan right away. And, and right now, the Bills come out on the field defensively thinking, okay, their best player is sitting on the bench. He's not playing. They got this other guy in. And all of a sudden, they give Dominique Rhodes a chance to win the game here in the first quarter. And he's come through in a big way. The Colts scored. Uh, Often in the first half in that earlier meeting at the RCA Dome, uh, Manning had four touchdown passes against the Bills in the first half. First and ten again. Manning pump faking. They take care of him. He lets it go long. The coverage is there, and Marvin Harrison goes down. And uh, they, it's ruled that the uh, defender right with him, Antoine Winfield, number 26, who is with one of the best cover corners in the NFL in his third year out of Ohio State. Clean block on the play. That's right. You watch that. That's the pump fake by Peyton Manning. He does that as well as any quarterback in the league. And Marvin Harrison runs a good stomp route. Watch he comes out. He'll just stomp and then take off by him. And Antoine Winfield has none of it. He knows he's got help underneath. Just don't get beat, beat deep by their key receiver. It's a good, well defended play. And it makes it second down and ten, as you see. Rhodes, the lone back. He gets the ball. Turning up. Cutting back. And Rhodes again gets plus yards. This is a guy that Peyton Manning told us was an all-world high school player in Texas, completely undrafted out of Midwestern State. Said he kept asking questions in training camp. And he had a right on the tackle. And uh, he said he was just a guy trying to win a job. And when we give him the ball, he's delivered. Yeah, well, Peyton Manning said all you saw, you saw him with his playbook in his hand all the time. And right now you're getting the idea that Hey, Edger and James is a good back, but he's also got five good guys in front of him, the same guys that are blocking for Dominique Rhodes. Rhodes uh, running and receiving, Steve, already has 45 yards in this drive. Third down. Needing four, here's a throw and a catch to Marvin Harrison, and the Colts drive on, advancing to the ball to the 46-yard line. The Indianapolis Colts, the number one rated offense in the NFL, but... You play the game two ways, and their defense rates 27. Yeah, it's interesting enough, Don. This last play that you just saw to Marvin Harrison, that's the first time anybody else has touched the ball other than Dominique Rhodes. I think that's a clear statement about the, what the Colts have intended for today's game. They're not changing anything. Their key back in the backfield is going to stay. Whoever's back there is the guy. Well, the guy's been uh, Dominique Rhodes. And he gets the ball again, cutting back. Rhodes is taken as he advances across the 35-yard or the 45-yard line down to the 43. Big Pat Williams, 320-pound inside tackle, makes the stop. Pat carrying a little extra there. Yeah, he's, he, you got to have that in there. You're just in a dogfight every game. And, and I'll tell you what, you know, you, you see the skill players around. Those guys don't have that extra effect because they don't need the protection. Big guys need that because it makes them more durable. If that's the case, he's got to be a durable guy. <laughs> He'll never get injured, huh? 11th play of the drive coming up. Colts looking real sharp. They usually do when Peyton Manning's running the offense. It looks like chaos, but it's all very controlled as he changes plays. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. Manning goes down at the 48-yard line of the bill, so... Bill Hansen gets that sack. The Bills with two sacks already, Steve. And Manning coming into the game had been sacked only 12 times in the previous six games. What happens is the most important things that happen on these plays when Peyton Manning is in this kind of mode where he changes the play, all the important stuff happened before the snaps. The play is won or lost before they even snap the ball because the game is won. Peyton Manning is going to get you if you don't have your schemes just right. And that time, the Bills outguessed him. Colts offensive line, they do a terrific job blocking for Manning, but the Bills freeing up pass rushers. Third down. Manning needs 17. He dumps it off. Same screen play. Here's Rhodes. 
And this time he's taken down to the 43 yard line and into the wind. It looks like he'll send their punter out. They do. Hunter Smith comes out to punt the ball for the Colts as Chris Watson made the stop. But that's a nice looking screenplay. Well, it worked so well the first time. It really was a successful play this time. But on third and such a long distance, you can't really expect to pick it all up like you did earlier. But you can bet that the Buffalo Bills are going to see that play a number of times today. Well, they've seen it uh, twice in this opening drive, both for big yardage. Back is Peerless Price, awaiting the punt of Hunter Smith, who will try to directionally kick the ball out of bounds, kicking into a win. This, of course, a dome team. He boots the ball downfield, hits it very nicely, but it does carry him into the end zone for a touchback. And so the uh, sustained drive of the Colts is stopped. At, that is a 42-yard punt, but only 22 net. We're back in uh, Western New York, a beautiful November day. Wind uh, is gusting, though, and as you know, Steve, from playing here for so many years, it can pick up speed, and bad weather can come with it. Yeah, it's going to affect play today in some way, shape, or form. We just don't know how yet. Rob Johnson stands in, gets a lot of time, shoots it out, and gets the great Eric Moles, making his 22nd catch of the year, ahead for a 14-yard gain. Rob Johnson is the number one quarterback in the NFL, completing 71% on third down. You see his overall numbers. Very, the, all the Colts we talked to, the coaches, Jim Mora, the players on defense, everybody talked about Rob Johnson, the runner. Yeah, it's not so much that he's shifty or got good moves. The thing is, he's fast, and these guys sometimes can't catch him if he breaks loose. Johnson uh, called rollout, swings the ball out. Again, he goes to Eric Moles. This is a guy who caught 94 balls for over 1,300 yards last year, but rookie out of uh, Tennessee who they really like a lot. He hasn't run for much yardage in the last two games, but nobody does against San Diego. And Travis shaken up. Well, he's attended to. There's a break in the action. No score. And there is uh, bad news for the Bills. Their prime runner, Travis Henry, uh, injured. It looked like it may be the small of his back. Yeah, he, he uh, tried to throw a block, and you'll see here. Here he is right here as he comes in, tries to throw the block, and it just goes over the back. And sometimes when you do that, Don, you catch the knee of the defender up in your rib cage, and I think that may be what we. It's hard to speculate, but he stayed down a long time. He did. Ellis Johnson's got a big knee. It was completely inadvertent. Here is a handoff now to Sean Bryson, and he breaks it. So Bryson rockets ahead on a second down and five play. He gains nine yards and gets a first down for the Bills. Macklin was victimized in earlier games this season. People going deep on him. They're going to try to get Eric Moulds against him. Handoff, and Bryson again gets the ball, but this time he's taken down. Good defensive play as Corey Bird, number 41, came in to make the stop. Take a look at uh, Travis Henry being attended to on the sideline. Yeah, and that's not good. He's a guy that has really made a mark for himself and made a niche for himself here at the Buffalo Bills. They've done running back by committing the last few years, and when as soon as he stepped on the practice field in training camp, he was the starter, and you could feel it throughout the organization. They finally found their guy, and now he has to sit on the bench as Sean Bryson takes over. Travis Henry out of Tennessee, another Tennessee volunteer. Bryson is in there to come. Here's uh, Rob Johnson looking to throw, and he dumps it off, gets outside the tackle box. And that'll bring up third and long, and a penalty marker comes in late. Yeah, that was a screen pass, Don, and all the offensive linemen released down the football field. They were 10 yards down the field when Rob Johnson threw that ball out of bounds. That's going to be an Ill illegal man down the field. He'll probably take the incomplete pass. Go to third yeah, they, and eight. Yeah, they'll decline. Yeah, you can see there, Jim Moore says, uh, we don't want that penalty. No, sir. Jim Moore talking to him about his team said hey we're three and three we are what we are. Yeah. It's not bad though a game out of first in the AFC East. An eligible offensive player downfield number 71 and number 79. That penalty's declined third down. One of the things that's plagued this Colts team has been inconsistency and we asked him about it. he says hey that's the NFL these days and you know what he's right. Every team in the league wishes they were more consistent and the Colts are just another one but when the Colts are consistent, they're very, very good. They are that, and the Bills are getting points in the first quarter has not been an easy enterprise for them. They've been outscored in the first quarter, 52 to 16 this year. This is a scoreless first quarter after the long drive by the Colts stalled. They had the ball for over seven minutes and 30 seconds. Here's Johnson. He's going to get his first sack of the day. 
The referee Coleman comes in quickly whistling. He's in the grasp. As they sent uh, defensive backs, Macklin and Bird both came in and got him. So a different defensive look as we see uh, Travis Henry taken off. Yeah, on that last play, you get an idea of why the Buffalo Bills have struggled this year. They only had three men deep in the pattern. Rob Johnson has everybody, seven guys to protect him, and he still gets sacked. And there's only five guys rushing there, although two defenders got him. And that's been the problem for the Buffalo Bills, and it looks to like continue here today. And now the punter in, Brian Mormon. Ready to punt to Terrence Wilkins. Woman with a gusting wind at his back. Flags are straight out. He hits the ball, and uh, the wind takes it downfield, and wisely, Wilkins lets it carry him into the end zone for a touchback. So the Colts will get their second possession from their 20. 4.51 to go in the first quarter, and still no score. We're back and ready to go at Ralph C. Wilson Stadium. There's Edger and James, the NFL rushing champion the past two seasons. Came through the first six games, was second in the league this year, but out with a hyperextended knee. They expect him to be back next week. Didn't want to risk him this week after the injury at Kansas City. Manning with a great fake. Here's a timing throw, and he connects, and the ball is dropped by the rookie. Reggie Wayne from Miami man that was a terrific play by Manning but a drop ball yeah, one of the reasons Reggie Wayne is in the game today is because that guy Edger and James is out and so is Jerome Payton and Jerome Payton who only played in the first couple of games this year was having an outstanding year coming off a, a year a, a year ago where he was injured you put that guy with Edger and James and those guys really are missed by this offense and that play right there showed it. And that ball flooded a little, Steve, into this win. Of course, the Colts, an indoor team. Here is a handoff, and Rhodes is caught in the backfield. Is coming in to make the play. Is uh, number 92, Tyrone Robertson, making another play. And one of the things about it, if you want to know, Edgerin James is out today because he got his injury last a week ago last Thursday against the Chiefs on October 25th. Watch here, his left knee gets extended right there. And that is the reason for his absence. And I think they played it smart, Don. There's no reason to bring him back. They've got, today, they've got 10 games left in the season. They need him for a playoff stretch. It's not here yet. They surely need him. One of the great players in the league, Edger and James, in any position. Here's Manning now, third and long. He's going to run it. Doesn't like to. And Manning wisely goes down as he's taken down close to uh, what was the original line of scrimmage, but 10 yards short of a first down, so they'll punt into the wind, will the Colts? Well, just like any other defense, the Buffalo Bills would love to get Peyton Manning in third and 15 all the time. And right here, I'm, I'm a little surprised. They only had three men rushing. It's as though that was a called quarterback draw, but you know they don't have too many of those in their playbook with Peyton Manning back there. Manning not a running quarterback, only in desperation. Two punt returners back for the Bills. As Hunter Smith hits the ball downfield, kicks it into the wind. Peerless Price feels the ball, looks for a gap. And he jumps ahead and gets to the 45-yard line. So the Bills will start with very good field position for their second try. A punt on the play of 41 yards and the return of five. In Buffalo, when the wind blows, you'll see a lot of teams put two guys back because the ball will move around. Look here as Peerless Price almost gets overpowered by that punt. That's one of the most crucial elements about the kicking game. The ball moves so much, you'll see a lot more kicks hit the ground that you wouldn't normally see. Look at those flags straight out. You've returned punts here, Steve. And that ball does drop right down, a high punt. First down. Rob Johnson gives to Bryson, and he takes on a tackler. Gets ahead for about three or four yards. Second down and six. Bryson, a big back at 235. Good play fake by Johnson. Now he's in trouble. Ball on the field. The Colts have it. So Rob Johnson is hit. He fumbles the ball, and the first turnover of the game gives the Colts the ball at the Bills' 45-yard line. Josh Williams is on the ball. Chad Bratsky, who was questionable during the week because of uh, badly bruised ribs, Made a huge play for Indianapolis. You'll see here he has no chance. The play fake. He steps up in the pocket once and has to sidestep someone immediately. And then right behind him, Chad Bradsky gets in. Rob Johnson had absolutely no chance. It's amazing, too, that Buffalo has been as successful as they have. And when Rob Johnson is able to throw, he completes 
two-thirds of his passes. The question is, does he have time to set up and find someone? If the Bills uh, lose the turnover cap, it's almost certain that they will lose the game because the Indianapolis offense is so much better. Number one in the NFL. Here's Manning with a throw. Incomplete as the coverage is very good. They go back to Wayne. They have the rookie from Miami, Steve, working the sideline. Log on to NFL.com and vote for the AFC and NFC All-Stars to play in the 2002 Pro Bowl. Vote now only at NFL.com or AOL keyword NFL.com. You know, today, Don, we get a chance to see some corners playing in Winfield and Clements for Buffalo and also Jeff Burris for the Colts. They don't get a lot of interception, but I always thought that was overrated. A, a cornerback gets interceptions when they throw at him all the time. These guys are good enough. They scare quarterbacks off those throws. Let's see uh, what he's checking off to now. Will he be throwing Peyton Manning? He goes to the run, and Dominique Rhodes tries the middle of the Bills defense, and Big Cat Williams shuts it off. So that'll bring up third down in about eight. Colts with a big chance here now, getting the ball on the game's only turnover so far. That's one of the things that, and that you notice about this Peyton Manning-led Colts offense. What they do is they're very explosive. You know they can go the distance any time, but they also have the, the ability to just hang on to the football and move the chains and just stay on the football field. And it's such a disheartening thing for a defense. Now they bring up a, a blitzer as Manning goes over and talks to his offensive line and says, watch out for Tavares Tillman, who's coming on a blitz. And here is Manning standing in. He's in trouble, and Manning eludes it. Turns the corner. Manning's going to run for a first down and gets out of bounds. So Manning, a quarterback who does not like to run, does it very well. He gains eight yards and gets the first down. Well, that's what Peyton Manning does so well. He knows he's not a good runner, but he does have the ability to buy more time. And in this situation, as he sidesteps the rush, there's a great move on Kenyatta Wright. And then Aaron Schobel, number 94, get, got caught inside, and there was nobody there to stop him from getting the first down. Peyton Manning is not a great runner, but he is an effective runner. He did it all by himself on that play. The Bills are getting pressure consistently on Manning, though. And one of the guys doing it is a very underrated player, Tyrone Robertson, a rookie from Hines Community College. Hand off, Dominique Rhodes breaks it, and he's in down to the 20-yard line. And they missed nothing today, not having Edger and James, because so far, Dominique Rhodes has been just as good or better. Yeah, you'll find a lot of teams have a lot of faith in their backups. It's just a question of getting them on the field. Dominique Rhodes really showing that's a well blocked up front goodness gracious there's a big hole there dominic rose has got to be loving life he's a guy that came in with a lot of confidence he said you know when i first stepped on the field i knew that i could play all i had to do was prove it and today he's getting his chance 14 yard run by rhodes and here are penalty markers as uh, perhaps leaving early on the defensive side was pat williams he says he was drawn off but let's find out what uh, Walt Coleman says. That's usually what matters. Yeah, the, the finger pointing begins just after that, but Pat Williams looked to be offside. I didn't see any movement on the Colts' side of the football. As mentioned, the Bills outscored this season. Encroachment, nose tackle, defense. John Williams. Still first down. So now the Bills' defense is up against it. Manning has a first and five call. And what this does, and you'll see right here, as the play develops, yeah, that's just that's just him getting a big jump on the ball. And what happens now? They're inside the 15-yard line, Don, and the whole field changes. Everything changes. Even the the defensive philosophy will change for Buffalo as well as that for the Colts. And Manning, as you know, Steve, is a master of the red zone for his career. 57 touchdowns, six interceptions in red zone play. He's going to go to the run, and there is a jarring hit. As coming across to put the hard hit on was the middle backer out of North Carolina, Brandon Spoon. And that should just about do it for the first quarter. It's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Colts nothing and the Bills nothing will return right after this message. Jim Mora looking for his Colts now to capitalize on the first turnover of the game. On Fumble forced by Chad Bratsky as we look at the D coordinator for the Bills, Jerry Gray. He's a great player for the Rams and the University of Texas prior to that. Now Manning and the Colts are working with this gusting wind at their backs in the second quarter. 
Manning calling all the blocking alignments, changing plays, completely orchestrates everything that happens on offense. Good drop. Manning steps in, throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. So Rob Johnson's big mistake, holding the ball out to have it stripped, leads to the first points of the game, a 15-yard touchdown throw by Peyton Manning to Marcus Pollard. And as we saw it a little earlier, Peyton Manning is the master of the pump fake. Marcus Pollard to the left off your screen. Peyton Manning will pump it once and then throw it deep. Actually, he just did it. And Marcus Pollard ran a pump fake in his route and left Jay Foreman standing there. Look, at he likes that. Marcus Pollard is a guy who dropped about three passes last week against Kansas City back in the saddle for Peyton Manning. Now the point after will be tried by Mike Vanderjack as he hits it up and good. Mike and the Colts Jack open the scoring is good. and they take a 7-0 lead. Marcus Pollard with his fourth touchdown catch of the year. There's Marcus Pollard who never played college football. He was a basketball player as a collegian playing at Bradley University. Now he catches his... Uh, 14th pass, or his 18th pass of the Mike year, but it's his fourth Jackson touchdown pass as Manning and the Colts Nate jump Prince on the big mistake, the, the big play actually by their defender, Bratsky, knocking the ball free from Rob Johnson and recovering the fumble. Recovered by Josh Williams. Here is the kickoff now. Ball hit downfield into the, uh, with the wind at their back, a bouncer to Nate Clemens, and the play is whistled dead. Somebody had a mistake on the spot of the ball. Not a special teamer's delight, right, uh, Steve, having to do this over? You're exactly right. And, and nobody wants to see him kick off again. The ball was falling off the tee. Before he kicked the ball, we will re-kick. Uh, Sometimes you get a guy to hold it when that happens. Watch there's the ball. Yeah, you can see right there it is falling off, and that is that's the right call. There's no question about it. They don't let that happen, but you'll have to bring a guy in and hold it now that it's fallen off the team you see there that's a rule Cliff Crosby has to come in and hold that ball on the tee they don't want to keep doing this over and over so after it happens once they bring a, a human tee in should be a deep kick as the, the wind is at the back of the Colts The ball hit downfield by Vanderjack. It does carry deep to uh, about a yard deep. Here comes Avion Black. He's fast, turning the corner. Black turns it up, crosses the 20, and gets out to about the 27-yard line, a return of 28 yards. Now let's see if the Bills can respond now, a team that's had problems scoring in the Buffalo first half as Peyton Manning looks at some pictures. And that's what happened to Buffalo a week ago in San Diego. They just can't get it going fast enough offensively to make a difference in the first quarter, and they end up fighting out of a hole. They were down 13-0 in San Diego with the Bills in the first half. Johnson hands off. And the ball is taken by the quickly recovered Travis Hendry. So you look at the Colts, how they stand. It's a very interesting contrast. On offense, look at that. One in total yards, two in passing, three in rushing, two in point. But look at defensively, they can be had. That's exactly right. And as Travis Henry comes into the game for the Buffalo offense, you see there, all, both these teams want to keep pace offensively. They've got to match scores. We heard that from both sides of the ball. Here's a near side throw, beautifully done to Moulds, who's ahead to the 42-yard line as David Macklin makes the tackle. That's the guy they want to work on. A 12-yard gain on the play. Macklin, number 27 out of Penn State. So you've got one-on-one -on -one with one of the best receivers in the league, and you've got to respect his speed, and Macklin gives him a big cushion. Rob Johnson sees it, and that's one of the things I think is a mistake. When the wind is in your face, I don't think it's a good idea to give the offense so much of a cushion. Push. They're going to be they're going to be wary about throwing the ball down the field a long way. These cold corners team really playing off the receivers. Here's the handoff and running with the ball is Travis Henry as he crosses the 45 yard line of the Bills and gets to the 47. First down run. And he advances it about four yards. You see, this is. This is Travis Henry back into the huddle. It's amazing. He's hobbled off earlier in the game. And he's got only a 3.1 average, but that doesn't really say about what enough about what he means to this offense. Everybody on the team, the offensive linemen, the quarterbacks, really like him. He's a, got a great attitude, and he's really, really endeared himself to his teammates. Never complains, Johnson says. Always uh, working hard, and now a ball is slapped back at Rob Johnson. 
This a big Josh Williams knocks it back. So now Johnson and the Bills have to look into the playbook. How about does your offensive schemes change a lot when you're playing in this stadium with this win? Going into it. I don't think Buffalo changes anything. They play in this every day. They practice outdoors in it. I do think it's a consideration for the coaching staff, but I don't think they're thinking anything differently right now. They want to prove that the wind will hurt them. The best third down passer in the NFL, Johnson, has a ball dropped by Travis Henry. So the Bills, uh, with a couple of drops early in this game. Coming up on the next Tell Halftime Report, join Jim, Mike, Randy, and Jerry for all the scores, highlights, and the latest NFL news. Plus a CBS Brian News Gordon update, America on guard. You know, Don, you're talking about the win. I think the teams and the players, the coaches say, let the players worry about the win. We're going to call the offense we want to run. Now punting into the win. Now you'd think it'd be a, an advantage or disadvantage for the Bills, but as you pointed out, Steve, that ball drops straight down. It might be hard for Wilkins to handle. There's going to be more turnovers in this game. Here is a knuckleball kick, and it hops down. Inside the 20 and all the way down inside the 15 yard line. So they get a knuckleball to roll off the foot of Brian Mormon. A 40 yard punt that Brian didn't cover himself with glory last week at San Diego. And after a long uh, kickoff return, he was called for a personal foul to set up Flutie for the winning touchdown. Back to Western New York. Don Pricky with Steve Tasker. You see the Indianapolis play selection, pretty much even. Rush pass. And that's ideal, Don. Dominique Rhodes has been terrific. He has 70 total yards rushing and receiving. He gets the ball again. He's got more yards as he's taken down at about the 14 yard. Actually, well, they nailed it. It's going to be a very short gain of any. Pat Williams moving quickly for a 320 pounder. And that's why that guy right there made the departure of nose tackle Ted Washington possible. Everybody wondered if Pat Williams was going to be able to take the whole role as a starter, play every down. I think he's done very well this year. He's been one of the bright spots for the Bills defense. Big guy anchoring the middle. Manning and the Colts go on second down and nine. Throw in that errant ball. And whether or not wind effective, we don't know, but it's uh, certainly out of the reach of Dominique Rhodes. Yeah, I think Manning wanted him to be turning up field. Yeah, I think that's just a miscommunication. I think Peyton Manning used to throw that ball to Edger and James, and Edger and James runs that route just a little differently. And he throws this, and he looks, and he tries to guide it at the end. Look at how that ball starts to tumble. That corner where they're at right there is the windiest spot in the stadium. Yeah. Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator, looks on. Peyton Manning, the only player in NFL history with 3,000 plus passing yards in each of his first three years. Only player in NFL history with 12,000 plus passing yards over his first three years. Here comes the rush. Manning looks at it and he dumps the ball down and uh, throws it right at a guy. It threw it right at Rhodes and he wanted him not to connect it because it would have been a loss if he caught it. Oh, that was a spike. Now, he wanted it, he wanted out of there in the worst way. That was just get me out of here. Let's punt this out of here. And Greg Williams wants to say that he's between the tackles. He thinks he's got to get that out or past the line of scrimmage. It depends if the official sees that there isn't a uh, receiver in the area. That's OK. Hunter Smith, the uh, second year punter from Notre Dame, averaging over 46 yards a punt. This one will be longer than that as he has the wind at his back. He hits it poorly, though, end over end, but it could be tough to handle. It is picked up. And here comes the return by Nate Clemens, the rookie from Ohio State. It's gone. No flags. And this game will be tied if the Bills hit the extra point. Hunter Smith making a play. But too late. Same guy that ran back an interception against Manning in the first meeting. 52 yard punt, 66 yard return. Don, one of the differences this year for the Buffalo Bills has been their head coach, Greg Williams' commitment to special teams. He said, unless you're a quarterback, you can count on playing special teams this year. Nate Clemens, a starting cornerback, back to return punch. You don't see that very often. And that is the uh, first punt return for a touchdown for the Bills, Steve, since uh, opening day in 93, eight years ago. Over eight years ago, extra point is hit up and good by Jake Arians and so the game is tied on a spectacular return by a sensational first year player.
Nate Clements, the number one draft choice from Ohio State. Nate Clements, you're good. And uh, Steve Tasker, you put a lot of notches in your gun belt with great special teams play. We're going to look at the blocking alignments on that one in a moment after the kickoff. Now the ball is boomed into the wind. Wilkins is back. Here comes Terrence Wilkins, a dangerous return guy, and he breaks through and gets all the way out to the 37-yard line. A tremendous return, a 25-yard return. But now let's look at the 66-yard touchdown return by Nate Clements. As this happens, watch the ball bounces, and the, re and the coverage sheet people automatically kind of let up. Now watch here. The hole is here. Watch. They're just too late coming or off the corners to get to the tackle, and that's the difference. A split second. You let up for one step, and the return man is gone. Hunter Smith, who was an excellent uh, high school quarterback and all around at the state of Texas before going to Notre Dame to punt. He almost ran him down. He didn't see him coming from the off angle. He almost nonchalanted it for a tackle. Manning wants to get it back. Takes a look. He's got time. An open receiver. Marcus Pollard is all the way down to the Bills 43 yard line as Pollard gains 20 yards on the reception. You know, we talked about Nate Clemens and the Bills defense. What happened? They got off to a fast start in Indianapolis. The first play from scrimmage, Nate Clemens snatches it and goes the distance for a touchdown. And he does the same here today on a punt return. That's one of those times you wish you could play that team every week. Nate Clemens having a career in the two matchups against the Colts <laughs> this year. He is a tremendous young player. Number one pick. Both cornerbacks from Ohio State. And they're both playing off the uh, court receiver. Here's a quick out to Pollard. And uh, he takes it ahead to the 42-yard line. A lot of variations in the Colt play calling. They've got a deep playbook. Well, that's one thing you don't see very often. You'll see the Colts will throw that quick pass out to the wide side, but they don't always do that to a tight end. That's something Tom Moore pulled out just for this game. Usually it's out there to Marvin Harrison or Reggie Wayne, but today they give it to the big tight end and let him go with it. Manning has hit 7 of 12 throws for 83 yards and the 15 yard touchdown throw to Pollard to open the scoring. Rhodes rockets into the Bills defense on a second down carry and he is knocked down at about the 33 yard line. Third down and less than a yard. Manning checking some things off. He prays and takes it on a run. A naked reverse, and Manning's going to run for a touchdown because the Bills never saw him. A total breakdown by the Bills defense again, and a 33-yard touchdown run by a quarterback who doesn't like to run. Nobody saw him. The one thing that you get from Peyton Manning, there is no quarterback in the National Football League that handles the ball as well as he does. He's very good at it, and he spends a lot of time on it and takes a lot of pride in it. He carries the fake out every time, no matter what, and they think it's another fake here. And Peyton Manning is not a fast guy, and that is just one more reason you know he faked everybody out. Hey, some of these cold play calls, Totally embarrassing the Bills defense again as they did on September 23rd when the Colts ran a 555 yards offense against the defense of Greg Williams. Manning, that's his third rushing touchdown this year. Great. Peyton Manning just running 33 yards for a touchdown, and that is the uh, Longest run for a touchdown by a Colt quarterback in 48 years. 1953, George Talaferro ran 43 yards. I mean, you think there, he looks in pretty good shape. He doesn't seem too winded no. after that long run. That, he became the leading rusher in the game with that run. That's uh, what a great play what a by the Colts offense. Tremendous play calling by the Colts. I mean, the Bills weren't even in the picture. Here's the kickoff now. Avion Black takes it, looks for a place to go, and he gets it across the 20. And the Bills working into the wind here in the second quarter, down 14 to 7. Corey Bird making that tackle. And you watch here, watch how much the what the Buffalo Bills are all going to come this direction. Even Antoine Winfield is very late catching this up. Watch as this play goes off. Everybody runs the ball to the right, and Peyton Manning is all by himself. You see there how late Antoine Winfield sees this play, and he has no chance. Tremendous play call and execution by Peyton Manning. 
So he's thrown for one and he's run for one. He now has 13 touchdown passes this season. Now let's see if Rob Johnson can generate offense for the Bills against the 27th rated defense in the NFL. Here comes the rush. And the Johnson throws it away. A penalty marker comes in by the referee after he releases the ball. He was definitely out of the tackle box. Johnson maybe, complained to the official about something. Yeah, it might be a, a slap to the head by personal foul. Chuki Wakori. Chuki Wakori. Man who had a 95 yard fumble return against the Jets. Personal foul. Rubbing the passer. 91. Defense. Hit to the head. 15 yards. You see that more and more, Don, and these defensive linemen are chasing these quarterbacks. They get their hands in the air to block the pass and follow through and whack the guy in the head. You see that? He tries to get it and just bang right in the face. They'll call that all the time, and Rob Johnson knows it. You got to let the official know that happens. Chuki Wakori. Chuki Wakori uh, out of Purdue. Never started for the Boilermakers. Was a backup defensive lineman for... The Boilermakers as the run now by Travis Henry is broken out to the 48 yard line. Gain of 11 yards on the play, and the tackle was made by Idris Bashir. You, know, you think about this, Don. Both these clubs feel like they have to keep pace with the other's offense. They don't really talk too much about each other's defense. The Colts have been maligned. We saw how they're, earlier they're ranking, they rank near the bottom of the league. But Buffalo, I think when they line up, they just think about themselves because they know they're the problem with their team not the defense let's see what they go to now they go to Henry and he breaks into the Colt defense and on a first down carry uh, Travis Henry the rookie Henry from Tennessee is ahead for a gain of seven yards take tackled on the play by Josh Williams who had the fumble recovery earlier that led to the uh, first touchdown of the game you know Buffalo's got those two offensive tackles up front and Marcus Sullivan and John Carmen Young tackles and young offensive linemen are always better at run blocking than they are at pass protecting. The Bills know that, and they're probably going to try to use that to their advantage. Here's Johnson standing in. And again, he hesitates in his sack. That has been the dilemma of Rob Johnson, unable to make the quick decision and get rid of the ball. Sack more than any quarterback in the NFL since he's been starting for the Bills. And because you take so many sacks, he's often knocked out of games. That's the third sack of Johnson today. Yeah, well, you can't question his toughness because he does get hit a lot and he stays in the game. And after pounding like this time and time again, it does wear, wear you down as a quarterback. Beating up Bills. Look at 68 sacks. That's a huge Two number. Seasons. A huge number. A tough guy just to be in the lineup. The 23rd time he's been sacked this year. Third down. And they need about 11. This is a guy to complete 71% of his passes on third down. Best in the league. And now he's on the run. This is what they fear is ability to run. And Jackson goes out of bounds. So Rob Johnson on a very, very good defensive play by the Colts by Jeff Burris, who ran him down. They really have the lane shut up. He ran for almost 70 yards against the Colts in the first game in September. He's got nothing running today. And that's one of the things that you always worry about because you can close off the lanes to, to Peerless Price, to Eric Moulds, and to Jay Reimersma, but Rob Johnson can really run. You see there how fast he is. And that's the one thing that everybody on the Colts team we spoke to talked about. Flags are still straight out. The wind blowing at the Bills punter, Mormon, who hits the ball. Low punt. And it takes a roll. And the Bills down at the 27-yard line of Indianapolis. So the Colts will go on offense there, continuing to work with the wind at their backs. Well done, here we go. And the last time these two meet, met, the Colts scored on six straight possessions. The Bills have got to keep that from happening right here. This playbook of the Colts, though, is a masterpiece. I mean, it is fantastic. Something different all the time. Here's Manning on the run again. And he releases the ball and completes it for a first down. Manning rolling to his left and firing with the right arm. Gets it 15 yards downfield to Reggie Wayne for a first down. You look here, we spoke about the last time these two met, and this is this is amazing. They scored six touchdowns on six consecutive possessions. And look here, just 35 seconds, 41 seconds, 52 seconds. It looked very bad for the Bills defense, and that's the reason. Manning also rushed for a touchdown in addition to his uh, four touchdown throws, as you know, Stephen, at first meeting against the Bills in Indianapolis. 
And first down, the handoff. Here's Rhodes putting his head down, and a penalty marker comes in. Line judge throwing it in. Pat Williams was on the tackle. You know, Don, after we saw these two teams play back in September, <laughs> We were ready to crown the Colts as Super yeah, Bowl right. champions. That's how impressive they looked. And they really did look impressive. And then I think it they, they kind of got a little full of themselves in the preceding weeks, perhaps. Holding 73 offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. So Jim Morris sees uh, one of the few mistakes by his team this day. Dallas beating the Giants. Boy, the Giants have gone into a tailspin. But there's been uh, some terrific plays by the other overmatch in this game so far a total overmatch the great play of Peyton Manning and the his counterpart Rob Johnson so far has given the Bills nothing nothing at all and he fumbled the ball away that led to the first touchdown here is a stick the Bills continue to play our defense Bryce Fisher the young man from the Air Force Academy making the stop for the best NFL coverage on the net including expert analysis and live scoreboards go to cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sports Line. You were right, Don. I mean, the Bills must feel fortunate to be down only by seven points because Indianapolis has outplayed them. You take away the great punt return by Nate Clements, and this game is already getting out of hand for Buffalo. They've got to do something not just on defense, but also offensively. Manning is Steve, also the leading rusher in the game. Three carries for 44 yards. 33 coming on the touchdown run. Here's a penalty marker. Might have been movement. In the Colts line, Bills would take that play, though, unless it's uh, negated by the pre-snap penalty. This is going to go against the Bills. It's going to be encroachment. It is that. And that's the problem. It's a lack of discipline, and it's second down and almost 25. You don't want to give them an extra opportunity. They're already playing so well offensively. 96, defense. so difficult not to see right here you'll see it he just puts his head across the neutral zone and the, the officials looking right at him he can't miss it it's a lack of discipline it was Eric Flowers who was the Bills uh, number one draft choice last year so far as a pro he's been a disappointment has delivered very little for the Bills they're waiting for him to have the breakout game second down for Manning and the Colts Manning getting some time over the middle a great throw to Dominic Rhodes and he is out to the 42 yard line but still even with a nine yard gain it'll leave third down and almost 10. Tackled by Kenyatta Wright number 57. And that, that looks third like down. you know third and 10 is not so great but when you start out second and 25 that's actually pretty good you just want to get half of it back third and 10 you feel like you have some sort of opportunity to convert to third down third and 25 you have no shot. Manning wary of the interception his nine picks this year four of them have been run back for touchdowns. Here come the Bills with some blitzers Manning wisely stops them stalls them with a long count crowd noise kicks in here come the blitzers Manning throws incomplete and the Colts have to punt the ball Wilkins was the intended receiver Urban defending. It's so interesting, Don, to see Peyton Manning work the snap count and make audibles, and some of it is all fluff. It, it doesn't mean anything, but the defense continues to try and outguess him. They try and get him to change the play to something that they have defended. It's a, a continual chess match on the pre-snap look. He constantly is changing things. He, he orchestrates everything, the line blocking, all the play calls, changing him. Here is the punt. It's a kind of an errant punt off the side of the foot of Hunter Smith, but it does take a cold bounce and then Karam's out of bounds. Let's see where they'll mark it as they come up at about the 25-yard uh, line. So the Bills will start at their 25, first down and 10, with 3:49 to play in the first half. And Rob Johnson is due to make a play for the Bills if they're to get back in this. Johnson has been sacked three times today. He's fumbled the ball away once. Great play by the defensive end. Bratsky who knocked it free. Soon after the Colts had their first touchdown. Johnson steps in. They get him again. He fumbles again. And Rob Johnson, who's had some bad days, might be challenging his own record as having one of his worst. He is killing the Bills, and the Colts defense is jumping all over it. Mike Peterson coming hard. The young linebacker 
from Florida. Well, this is the story of the Buffalo Bills offense. Rob Johnson has to come back. There's a play fake. When he steps up into the pocket, almost immediately he has to tuck and run, and he's not doing that today. And the ball is so vulnerable when you've got all those guys in traffic. It's always going to pop out because the D linemen are trained to make it pop out. Good play by Brad Scioli, and now the Colts ready to perhaps jump on another opportunity and build this lead to 21-7 to before halftime. Manning with every play call in the book today, including a naked reverse by the quarterback that he ran in for 33 yards and a touchdown. Quick out, another great play call. Marvin Harrison turns the corner and is knocked out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Against the 27th-ranked defense in the NFL, that of the Colts, Rob Johnson's unable to generate anything. Well, that says something about the problems the Bills have had on their offensive line. They're continually giving up pressure to the quarterback. He can't step into his throws. When he does throw the ball, he actually is very proficient. But this is a defense you see right there that is really on its heels. They just made a good stand, and now they're right back on the field in a worse position yet. One player really killing the Bills' effort, and the Colts are really capitalizing. Defense standing tall today. They don't like being ranked 27th. Here's Dominic Rhodes, and he gets to the 17-yard line. The Bills have shown a propensity to come back, though. They were down 13-0 in the first half at San Diego. Took the lead late in the game, and then lost the game when they gave up with 90 seconds to play. 72-yard kickoff return, followed by a 15-yard penalty against Mormon, their kickoff man. You see here once again the Colts in the red area where that guy right there, Peyton Manning, may be the best in the league at scoring touchdowns. They're doubling Marvin Harrison, Steve. He's deployed to the near side where they have three set receivers set. Alone on the top of your screen to the left, that's Wilkins. Here's Manning. He's looking downfield and a hard hit, and the ball is freed as Harrison is hit with a knockout punch. Clean hit by Rayon Hill, incomplete pass. And that was knocked loose by Hill. And that's one of the things that most defenses will try and do if you're going to throw the football to Marvin Harrison Inside you're going to make him pay for that you're going to bring up and when he comes in bring the violence and watch it You'll hear how hard it hits Man. Believe me Don that When you get up the next morning you remember exactly what that feels like because your body reminds you how about the, you had some of those when you were the hitter, not the hit E. It's always better to be the hitter. The hitter. <laughs> Here is the field goal try now from 34 yards out. And the Colts capitalize on another Rob Jansen fumble, and they build their lead to 17 to 7. Peyton Manning having another good day. Uh, he's hit 10 of 17 for 111 yards and a touchdown. He's also the leading rusher in this game for his team. Here comes Avion Black looking for room to go. Black cuts back and dives out to the 28-yard line. And then you have Rob Johnson now coming out to quarterback the team. He had a very good game last week at San Diego, Johnson. But today on the home field, he has been awful. And one of the problems is the guys up front. These are the guys that would be playing that can't. Starting left tackle, starting right tackle. Jerry Ostrowski was lost in the preseason, who was a huge loss. And Chris Ferris, who was brought in to replace one of the guys that got injured, broke his leg. Four guys out of five that had no business being on the field when the season started. He's got to be aware, I think, Steve, that his new tackles are getting beat with a wide rush. He steps up and he's getting hit from behind. That's what's causing the fumbles. Here's a handoff to Larry Centers, who they've not thrown the ball to. Larry Centers with 39 catches, but none today. Colts have taken him out of the game for the most part, although they've got a lot of one back. Two-minute warning. This is a guy that I guarantee you will be in a Pro Football Hall of Fame as the first special teams guy. My friend, my hero, my idol, Steve Tasker. This was the presentation of the Greater Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame. Don Crickey with a new inductee yeah, to that yeah. Hall of Fame. Steve, wasn't a dry eye in the house. Yeah, mine either. <laughs> That's because that banquet went on too long and I was ready to go home. <laughs> But it was a great honor, the uh, Greater Buffalo Sports Hall. And then you got another award today. I mean, you're top-heavy with awards, the Ralph Wilson Humanitarian Award. 
I should have retired five years ago. I'd have been a legend by now. <laughs> right now, Rob Johnson looks to make a play. Here he is on the run, throwing and a drop ball as he guns the ball hard to Reggie Germany. A rookie receiver from Ohio State and a drop ball. And Mike Peterson was covering, but the receiver was open. It was a drop. You see, Reggie Germany is a guy who's now starting to play a little more, not because of deficiencies ahead of him, but because he's been flashing in practice, and this coaching staff wanted to get a look at him. They want to see what he can do. And he's not going to get much of a look today as Rob Johnson running for his life back there doesn't have much time to look for anybody. Johnson now uh, three of seven throwing the ball for only 31 yards. All three completions, Steve, to Eric Moulds, who's been quiet lately. Here comes the rush. Johnson stands in, throws downfield, and overthrows a wide open Larry Centers. Johnson hit as he releases the ball. That's a play that came wide open right down the pipe to Larry Centers, and Rob Johnson once again just can't step into the throw. Watch here as he right in front of the screen. He throws this and just can't find his receivers. He ends up on his back. Doesn't even know if it's completed or not. The knock on Rob Johnson is that he is, as an NFL starter, a career loser as far as a losing record. The guy who was here last year, Doug Flutie, has an extraordinary winning percentage. He's now doing that at San Diego. Here's the punt hit downfield and going for the ball. But Wilkins lets it carry him out of bounds. Nicely hit ball. Punted downfield by Mormon. The NFL on CBS doubleheader continues next as the surprising Cleveland Browns visit the Chicago Bears at Soldier Field or the Kansas City Chiefs take on the San Diego Chargers. The Bears under Dick Duran off to a 5 and 1 start with the NFL's best defense and the Browns under first year coach Butch Davis really a rising team and today they uh, are going to look to get their defense moving. Yeah, the Browns in Chicago is going to be a huge game. What a what a story those two franchises are. They are really forcing people to look at them in a whole new light this year. They got their best uh, young defender back, Courtney Brown. A pass rusher's been out all season with a knee strain. Here's Dominic Rhodes hit and stopped. As the game clock's down to 134 to play, and the Bills, in their wisdom, let the clock run rather than. They still have all three timeouts. Who does this play calling? Who makes these decisions? All well, these decisions are come from the sideline, and I think the Bills don't want to give Peyton Manning any more look at them than they've gotten already in the first half. Manning throws, makes a connection. Harrison has the ball down at the 23. It'll still be five yards short of the first down, and the Bills, uh, with third down coming up, now they call a timeout. He's going to go. Colt Manning's going to take yeah, the timeout. You'd almost, I was almost about to say, you know, you'd almost think Peyton Manning would take a timeout. They're so confident offensively right now. Why not give themselves a chance? Peyton Manning, a guy who knows how to work the clock, has a brother, Eli, who was in a seven overtime game last night. This is Ole Miss's last week for the touchdown. I talked to Peyton tonight, and you see there, there's the family. There's, <laughs> Peyton Manning, there's Archie, there's the whole family up there cheering on the younger Manning quarterback, and, and that's one of the reasons he's a good professional, Don. He's got a good support network, and he came into this league knowing what it is to work hard, and that's all the difference. Because he's the son of the great uh, New Orleans Saints quarterback, Archie Manning himself, uh, one of the hallmark, hallowed players in Ole Miss history, and his brother Eli now. Keeping up, I was talking to Jim Moore about Eli. They think he could be another uh, Peyton. He's just yeah. big, yeah, six they, five. They, you ask everybody, they kind of shake their heads and man, he's got the arm. His first game, he threw for five touchdowns. Eli Manning. Here's a third down call now by Peyton Manning and the Colts. 109 to play. They need a long four. They go to a draw, and Rhodes gets ahead, and he is stopped short of the first down. Where the spot is, Bills uh, don't stop the clock though. It's down to why don't they stop the clock? Yeah, they want. I, I would think that they want to take a stop the clock. It's fourth and short. Fans are booing and signaling timeout. And with 45 seconds and counting, coming Coach up, is the trying Colts, to call a timeout. Now they call a timeout so late. This thing. and that's that's poor clock management, Don. You are right on it. I mean, they, they've got to make that decision before the play happens. Well, you got 70,000 people booing. I mean. The uh, Colts send out their punter, Hunter Smith, and the Bills in this win send back two punt returners, including 
Nate Clemens, who ran an earlier punt back 66 yards for the Bills only score, number 22. And also Peerless Price back there. These two guys are very good returners, but the reason both of them are back there is because of the wind that has given punters a problem today. There's Hunter Smith, uh, Peerless Price is back. He caught a lot of passes from uh, Peyton Manning when they were both at Tennessee together. He hasn't caught a ball today with the best NFL per catch average over 20 yards a catch this season Peerless Price ball hit beautifully up into the wind back goes Clemens fields the ball nicely and now looks for a gap puts his head down and dives out to the 35 yard line with just 33 seconds left to play in the half 51 yard punt and an 11 yard return and the Bills though, should be pointed out Steve if they do get in field goal position. It's going to be a lot harder because they're kicking into the wind. Yeah, they've almost got to get inside the 25-yard line of the Colts just to attempt it, and that would make it about a 42 or 43-yard attempt, and I don't know if you can do that into this type of wind, and that's Jake Arians, the kicker for the Bills. Strong leg, but I'm telling you, he got one block last week. He's hit 9 of 15. He's 4 of 8 from 40-plus. Here's uh, Rob Johnson. He's a deer in headlights. Now he's on the run. This is what they were worried about, and he slides to a halt of the 40-yard line. 24 seconds left, and the Bills uh, quickly signal for No, they're not calling a time. Now they call a timeout with 20 seconds left. That's, you know, there just seems to be a little indecision about when they want to take timeouts and when they want to let the clock run. And I think that's something you have to have well-schooled. Greg Williams, they've got a lot of... Uh, work at the chalkboard at halftime because his team really I think his defense for the most part has made some good plays except when they were completely embarrassed by Manning on the naked reverse for a touchdown but their offense hasn't been here you're right and I think that's the key I mean Rob Johnson can't drop back and throw the football they've either got to do everything as a rollout or as a planned scramble because they have no time to drop back into the pocket Johnson steps in sacked again as the young uh, offensive tackle, Mark Thomas gets this sack, has just beaten, beaten to death. The Bills are starting two new offensive tackles because of injuries. Johnson sacked five times in the first half by a team that is not known for its pass rush. And you'll see here as Mark Thomas just comes off the corner, and Marcus Sullivan just can't get off the line of scrimmage fast enough to stop the rush by Thomas. And I got to tell you, Donnie, Mark Thomas is a good player, but he's not like a Bruce Smith or a Reggie White. Or, or a Javon Curse. I mean, he's a good player, but he's a backup player for the Indianapolis Colts, who are 27th in the league in defense. Well, you've got to go to max protection, or bring two backs in and hold them in. You've got to have blocking help, because they're not going to get a pass up unless they do. Yeah, the, this, this offense that the Bills are running may be just the tonic that the Colts' defense needs to get some confidence, because they're playing very well against a front five for Buffalo that is struggling. Well, as Tom Moore, Steve, the offensive coordinator for the Colts, said yesterday, Every player in professional football, above all else, has tremendous pride of being in this league. And the Colts, uh, they don't like being ranked 27th in defense when on the other side of the ball, they're ranked number one. You're exactly right. And, and that happens a lot of times. And I asked Jim Moore, I said, is it, is it a problem for your defense when they're playing on such a good offensive football team? They get a lot more plays to defend because Peyton Manning and company score a little bit faster. Uh, their defense is always playing against an offense that is desperate to catch up, and that always puts a little extra pressure on those guys. Rob Johnson stepping in now on third down and ten. Rushes at him again. He dumps it off, gets it to Larry Centers, and Centers will be taken down to the 49-yard line with uh, two seconds, one second, over and out. First half ends, and the Colts dominate, leading 17-7 to at halftime. We'll return to Ralph Wilson Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. Pretty good to me. Good enough. <laughs> we look at the first half stats. Uh, rushing out the uh, Colts were concerned though that unable to rush the ball in the second quarter talking to their president Bill Polian who used to run the Buffalo Bills. You don't see him smiling in a press box much at halftime. You know things are going well for his team when he's got smiles on. Usually he'll bite your head off, but the Colts are in such control of this game in the first half, they really are feeling good. There is an additional factor now to be worked into this equation. 
The winds are going to pick up speed in the second half. The temperature has dropped about 15 or 20 degrees already, and there's a chance of precipitation coming in. The Colts kick off to start the third quarter. All hit downfield. Here comes Nate Clements weaving his way ahead. And Nate Clements somehow follows his blockers out to the 32 yard line. A very nice return. It's Rob Johnson, who was uh, totally ineffective in the first half, but he was under duress with his young tackles unable to hold out the uh, Indianapolis pass rushers. Now you think Rob Johnson, you know, the defensive line facing Rob Johnson today are going to lose about 10 pounds running after him because there's absolutely nobody in their way when he drops back to pass. This is the quarter that Johnson in the Bills passing game has to try to capitalize because they're working with the wind at their back. Yeah, Don, you mentioned uh, at the outset that the weather is coming in, in western New York here in Buffalo when the weather hits it hits like a brick wall and this game could turn nasty very quickly. See there what we're about over the tops of the buildings and the top of the stadium and you see the wind that's bringing that weather here. The Bills uh, four times in succession American Conference champions you were part of those teams Steve. Now trying to get out of this bad start this season. One and five start on the run. Breaking it nicely is Travis Henry as he takes it right at the uh, to the 44 yard line. You're going to see the Bills now. Uh, I think probably going to a lot different looks on offense and defense. Well it's important that the most crucial drives in a football game Don are the opening drive of the game and the first drive after halftime because you got to look at what your def the defense is going to try and do to you. And you come out and these are when the adjustments that you make at halftime are their most effective. Josh Williams shaken up the big defensive tackle who had a fumble recovery earlier in the game. That was the fumble forced by teammate Chad Bratsky when he knocked it free from Rob Johnson. Soon after the Colts had their first score of the day and a Manning touchdown pass to Pollard. Timeout. Here's the play that happened as you'll see here. Right there is that at the end of the play, Corey Holsey, number 71, gets right up right there, and that's the injury that Josh Williams suffered. So, well, Corey comes in for Josh Williams, and the handoff goes, and Travis Henry on first down runs to the 49 yard line. As they come out pounding the ball at the uh, Indianapolis Colts, Bratsky on the tackle. Yeah, one of the things Don, you and I were just talking about that it's going to be crucial for Buffalo to come out and run the football. They have absolutely no pass protection for Rob Johnson. And when you become one dimensional, it works both ways. You got to hope the other dimension can carry you through, and that is the run game for Buffalo right now. Larry Centers with only one catch. He came in as the with 39 catches for the Bills. Here is Centers now running the ball, and the Colts quickly shut that down. A loss on the play. From second and seven, it goes to third and eight. Tackled by the middle backer Rob Morris. You know, Larry Centers is a guy they picked up from Arizona as a free agent, and he has been a huge asset to the Buffalo Bills. Not only because of these numbers, you see here, these, um, these are Hall of Fame numbers, Don. I mean, that's a guy that's done it for a long time, but also in the locker room, to a man, the Buffalo Bills say this guy has been a difference maker. Tremendous player, a 12th year player. NFL record for receptions by a, a bat. Over 700. Here's a throw to an open receiver. And the ball is to Jay Remiersma. And Remiersma is down to the 40 yard line for a first down. So Johnson makes a nice timing throw. Chad Cota was on the tackle. A 12 yard gain. You called it earlier, Don. The Bills got into a formation with two wide receivers lined up in the backfield with Peerless Price. And they just spread the defense at the snap. And you'll see here. Peerless Price and Eric Moulds in the backfield as running backs. And that will confuse a defense, especially enough to get a tight end down the middle. Well, the one thing they learned, Steve, in the first half, Rob Johnson can't take seven-step drops and expect not to be hit. Here is uh, Travis Henry as he has stopped a good defensive play as the Colts get a tackler. And coming in to make the play was uh, number 94, Rob Morris, out of BYU, the number one pick a year ago. Second down. One of the things about it, this Colt defense knows that the Bills want to run the football. They're throwing everybody at the line of scrimmage to get them into a third and long situation. And you know, this is a time when you need your playmakers offensively to come through for you, and the Colts know that. Second down and ten. Let's see what the playmakers do on this. And uh, Travis Henry finds a gap, breaks ahead, and Travis Henry's not done until he gets down to the 29-yard line. So on uh, a 10-yard play, he gets about a 12 and a first down. 
we spoke during the first half, Don, if your offensive line is having problems because of their youth in pass protection, just let them run block. Let them fire out and put a hat on somebody and give your guys a chance just to grind it out and get some confidence. The running game here early in the second half seems to be working. It is really working. They're coming out running. Hills running the ball consistently here in the second or third quarter. Opening round of the second half, hand up, Travis Henry, he's caught and knocked down, and this time it is uh, Marcus Washington, outside Marcus linebacker, Washington, who comes in with the five and a half sacks. He's been a dangerous pass rusher. Well, one of the things about it, on first down, the Buffalo Bills are second still down. trying to run the football, and the Colts are having none of it. And Travis Henry, in and out, left the game early with a hip injury and then returned uh, to be effective, but... Buffalo still needs to run the football because that guy Rob Johnson doesn't have time to throw and they've been running with Travis Henry the rookie five carries for 30 yards in this drive here is a near side throw it's off the hands of Eric Moulds a poorly thrown ball and it skips off his hands and so that brings up third down and ten and yeah, we, we spoke a moment ago about the playmakers well here's the two of them Rob Johnson and Eric Moulds the two guys for the Buffalo Bills you expect to make plays and you know, it could have been a better throw, but Eric Moulds needs to make that. Of. Right there. That's a play he's got to make. It was a poorly thrown ball. <laughs> I don't know. I was, I I was a receiver, and I'd still say I had to catch it, but you're right. That was that was a ball that had to be thrown better. Well, you have to jump up for a swing pass. I don't think it's where they want it to be. <laughs> Third down. Johnson stands in. Here comes the rush. On the run, Rob Johnson takes a look, makes a throw, and it's not even close to Larry Center. So the Bills drive stalls. And they're sending Arians, their place kicker, out because they're working with a gusting wind. The ball's at the 30, the line of scrimmage. That'll make it about a 47-yard field goal. Well within his range. He's hit from 49. And Rob Johnson and Larry Center, when the play breaks down like that, it's all in feel. And that's Larry Center's thinking that the play was open inside. Rob Johnson wanting to get rid of it just after he makes his break and that's why the incompletion Remiers Maholds it'll be a 48 yard field goal attempt for the first year player Jake Arians kick is blocked and the Colts take over still on the alive and let's see who's got the ball Brad Scioli came in he grabbed the ball number 99 so uh, a bad situation gets worse for the Bills as the rookie Jake Arians now uh, 9 of 16 on field goal tries. He's blocked by Scioli. The Bills field goal game has been troubled as the uh, Colts just blocked that field goal attempt by Jake Arians but you remember last week in San Diego when the Bills were ready to tie the game it seemed. They had a field goal block. So their last two have been blocked. Last two attempts. Now Manning and the Colts go on offense. Manning pointing out a guy that might be blitzing, telling his back. Rhodes, look for him. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. Timing throw. It's caught. Reggie Wayne is on the run. One man to beat. He turns the corner. Wayne is down inside the 15-yard line. That's Peyton Manning. 42 yards, Steve. Peyton Manning pass, the Making the play on the quick slant. Read the defense, saw the blitz coming up the middle, and Reggie Wayne just breaks his route off. The defense overruns it to the flat, and it's a foot race. That's a good quarterback making a timely call and adjusting on the run, and Reggie Wayne, a young guy, making the read just like his quarterback did, making the defense pay. You almost get the feeling you know the Colts are going to score a touchdown. You just wonder with that very playbook how they're going to do it. Handoff. Dominique Rhodes crashes and heads it down inside the 10 and down to the six yard line. One of the things that happens in that field goal is we saw blocked a moment ago. Never fire out. You watch here. Marcus Sullivan will fire out to protect. You never do that because you'll see the gap open up as he leaves. And Scioli comes right through untouched. That's unforgivable. So now it's second down. Colts need four for the first down, seven for a touchdown. Bill's defense rock back on their heels. Manning and hitting him every way you can. Rhodes. 
Not much. I've got a couple down close to the six yard line where the middle backer Brandon Spoon made a good play fighting off the blocker. And this is where Peyton Manning, I believe, is at his best as a quarterback, Don. You have to be so prepared when you get down to this area of the football field. And Peyton Manning is so efficient because he never makes a play that he's not prepared for. He never throws it up for grabs. If the guy's not open, he doesn't throw it. And they're more efficient when you don't make mistakes. And they've made none today. No turnovers for the Colts. They lead by 10, and they've scored 10 points off Bill's turnovers. Now are they about to score again following a blocked field goal attempt? Third down, Rhodes takes it ahead, and he's down to the goal line. He's in. A touchdown signal is given. And so the Colts rocket in now. Another official coming in, and he's one official definitely signaled touchdown. We're going to discuss it. The far side official called it a touchdown. The near side official said he was down before he got to the line, to the goal line. And he, Let's a, see. a lot of fans will think, well, what's the difference? It's first and goal on the two yard line, That's but or two inch line. There is a huge difference. The defenders always think they can stop him. He's he down short. He also lost the ball. He also fumbled the ball. You're right, Don. But the ball actually, the ground caused that to come out, so that won't count as a fumble. He didn't get in on that he replay. He didn't get in. No. Right there, he didn't get in either. That's a good call by the near side official. First down. That's First and goal from point blank range. And that is the that is the proper call. Now defense, you'll you'll see the fans will kind of give up and say, oh, they're gonna score anyway. A defense will never do that. And you see right down there, right in there, the ball was down right at about that point. And that's where the ball is spotted. So the Colts come out with four downs to advance the ball less than six inches for a touchdown. Rhodes rocked, lost a yard. I think what you can possibly look for, knowing the wizardry of Manning, is that play fake. You're exactly, I was thinking the same pass thing. to Marcus Pollard. You can see the Bills defense absolutely sell out on that off tackle play. <laughs> Everybody on the defense was diving at it. Look here, nobody's looking at the play fake or the ball fake. You just got to feel that play fake is the next thing out of the bag for Peyton Manning. Second and goal, this time from just inside the two. Got the elephant package in. There's a lot of big players on the offensive line for the Colts. Manning play fakes, takes a look. Manning's in trouble, running for the sideline, and he jumps out of bounds. Manning knocked down as he's way out of bounds. I guess he was hit right on the sideline. Bryce Fisher, he's uh, the one Bill who really can get consistent pressure on him. Yeah, he's, they're chasing him around. Oh, you and I both said it's going to be a play fake pass, and here it is, Peyton Manning coming out. Fisher chasing him down. Phil Hansen giving pursuit. They gave him a little extra there out of bounds, but no call by the official. Well, they did give him a little extra. Now it becomes third down and goal from the one. It was first down and goal from six inches out. Dominic Rhodes is the eye back. He gets the ball. He's in, no, he's going to make it. Dominic Rhodes goes in. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Tremendous free agent acquisition. And Tom Moore making the play calls, making a lot of good ones. And Greg Williams sees his team having a real bad day. You're exactly right. Watch as he comes out. You'll see the pressure right up on the right side. That's Deshaun Polk pushing him deep into the backfield, but he has no inside pursuit that can get there in time. The offensive line of the Colts cutting off that pursuit to the outside, and that gives Rhodes a chance to get right to the corner. A well-executed play, even though the Bills had it snapped off at the beginning. That was a seven-play drive, 56 yards, following the blocked field goal attempt. So the Colts now take a 24-7 lead. Now you will be kicking off when we come back. There's Brad Scioli, the uh, Colts who started out very nicely this season, then went into a tailspin, and now they've come out of it, winning at Kansas City, and today building a 24-7 lead against the Buffalo Bills on the Bills' home field. Vanderjack kicks off into the wind. 
Lemons comes up on the ball, feels it at the 20, looking for room to go. Good special teams play, and he's taken down at the 35-yard line. So the uh, Bills and offense will try once again. For the most part, it's been futile. Buffalo Bills season tickets. The trolley car is running down Main Street in Buffalo, but the Bills offense isn't running very far. There is Jim Kelly, a longtime teammate of yours, Steve, and a great friend of yours who uh, is up for eligibility for the Hall of Fame this year, five years out of since retirement. First down and ten. Rob Johnson. He starts to check off now. First down play. The Bills with the wind at their backs. Here in the third quarter. Johnson. And he does well just to get rid of the ball as Cioli just comes in at will. And this is well, there's Jim Kelly there. Dialing for help. Do, he's dialing he's for, dialing help. for some offensive linemen for his old team. And there's a guy he's has stayed around in this area with his 1-800 old lineman. That's right. He's dialing up for help for the Duff, for the Buffalo Bills right now. And the I asked him at halftime. He's got an eligibility left. <laughs> Said he's done. He'd have to wear a 70s number today. They need him up front. Johnson throws. Seaver, peerless Price, as leveled as the ball comes in overhead. They're looking for a foul call, but the official rules, the hit was right on time. Follow all the games at NFL.com, and after the games, get in-depth analysis and recaps from the experts only at NFL.com or AOL keyword NFL.com. It's hard to be a wide receiver on a team that can't throw the ball and they have really struggled in their passing game and it all starts with the front five and the offensive line has struggled they've got different people playing different positions new starters rookie starters and it shows Johnson this is they have to shotgun him because he doesn't have time to drop back and set up his Colts are chopping at the pit too uh, coming out of the starting gate penalty markers thrown did somebody uh, move early they did a bill was uh, Legal motion. Prior to the snap, false start, 71, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. Corey Hulsey. Right here, there's Corey Hulsey as he, just before the snap, you can see there, and that's why they blow the play dead. You can see when you're, when you're struggling as an offensive lineman, the tendency is, well, all I need is just a little edge to make myself play better. Maybe if I jump the snap count or if I'm thinking about other things, I'm. You know, there's all kinds of things going on up front there, and none of them are good for Buffalo right now. And they have not been able to get the ball deep to Eric Molds, even against Macklin, who's really been victimized by some deep balls this season. Here is uh, Rob Johnson looking, and he's going to be sacked again. Down to the 31-yard line. Chuki Wokori gets the sack. And the Bills will punt. Well, the Bills are really in a no-win situation. The Colts can get pressure with just three guys, so not only do they have very few guys rushing, that means they've got eight guys in coverage. And Rob Johnson's looking around, all he sees are white helmets with horseshoes on the sides of them, and there's nowhere to throw it. And Will Corey makes the sack. Johnson hit his first two passes today, Steve. He's three for 12 since for virtually no yards, 56 yards total, and he's been sacked six times. Here's a punt hit downfield by Moorman. Aaron's Wilkins watches it back up. Takes a sideway hop and the Bills will down at the 23 yard line. So Manning and the Colts offense having no problems of their past possessions into the wind will try again. Hedger and James out of this game today the uh, NFL rushing champion the past two years with a strained knee but uh, without him they've done very well as you look at the uh, Next yardage, run and pass, engineered by the quarterback Manning, throwing on first down to a wide open crossing pattern to Marvin Harrison. Marvin takes a shot, put on him by Nate Clements, gains the ball out to uh, close to the 30 yard line. The good spot is just inside. You see, a lot of laughing Edrin's on that cold side. Edrin's not the one who took that last hit. Yeah, right. <laughs> Watch as Marvin Harrison comes across and runs. And this is, you know, like I said earlier, they love, everybody wants to get a shot at their top guy. And Nate Clements puts a big one on him. Ed, tell you what, though, Edrin James is, is easy enough to chuckle when you're not the guy in there taking those hits. Second down and two. Manning consistently uses all his play clock. 
Getting his alignment straight, maybe checking off and changing the play. Here is a Rhodes breaking into the Bills secondary, and he's ahead to her again out to the 47 yard Rose line. Traveris Tillman stopped him maybe from going the distance as it was. Dominique Rhodes getting the start, gained 16 yards. It gives you some idea of how potent this Colts offense is. The offensive line is just so well choreographed, and they've got a guy back there, usually Edger and James, who's pretty good, and this guy. Dominique Rhodes, who's just having a great day in relief. 21 rushes, 70 yards. He's also caught 45 yards worth of passes on his four receptions. Here's a ball knocked down, as getting a hand on it was Aaron Schobel, the rookie defensive end, 94. Dominique Rhodes, who is an all world player, Peyton Manning told us, is a high schooler in Texas. And then uh, he went to ended up at Midwestern State. Finally came in as a free agent. Uh, Peyton Manning saying all he wanted to do was get a job this summer. He was constantly working, had a playbook with him all the time. He said he kept asking questions. He really wanted to learn and be good. And he got his chance today, and he has been good. You're right, Don. I mean, if you show, we show you those numbers. If you'd have shown those to the Colts coaching staff before the game, they would have taken him, let alone with a whole quarter to play. And off. Rhodes again. He is ahead uh, down to the 46 yard line. Rayon Hill brings him down, a seven yard gain on that play. You know, he comes in and replaces him. These are the guys who have replaced Marshall Falk, Ricky Waters, Jamal Anderson all out, but their replacements came in and have played very well in Seattle, in St. Louis, and also Atlanta. These are guys, this has become a common theme in the NFL when you've got a guy, you need somebody to help back him up because sooner or later they all need a break. Yeah, you got to have a good one. At Back enough at every position. You're only a snap away from being in there if you're a backup. Third down. Manning with a blitzer on him, and he's sacked way back at the 42 yard line. Coming on and Peter was linebacker Keith Newman. So they sacked Manning uh, three times so far today. You see there, Peyton Manning knows he should have been picked up, and nobody got him. He got up pointing to him and says, you got to do it. Watch here as he comes in. Somebody should have gotten there, and the guy chasing him was Ryan Diem. You never know if that's exactly what it should have, who should have gotten him, but Peyton Manning knows his protection should have had Keith Newman picked up, and it didn't happen. Now the punter on the field, Hunter Smith to boot the ball for the Colts. Gets it into the wind, hits it well. Here is Peerless Price bobbling the ball, picks it up, gets one block, turns the corner. Peerless Price tape it down the sideline, and he's going to take it out close to the 27 yard line. Total yard so far in the game. We've been watching that all day. Indianapolis with 249, the Bills with just 107, so their defense is going to move up. Johnson on first and 10. Wings is tight end Reimersma in motion. Here's Johnson on a sprint out. Dumps it off to Reimersma. And a whole lot of nothing. A completed pass for no gain. Chucky Wakori was right there to get him. Yeah, and that's one of the things. The Buffalo Bills have a pretty good tight end in Jay Reimersma. And he has spent, because of the problems on the offensive line, he's spent a lot of time pass protecting and just checking to the flat, running small flat routes after he's cleared the pass rush. But and that takes a good player right out of your pass offense when your offensive line struggles. Rob Johnson has been sacked six times in the game. This time he hands off. They go to the run. Travis Henry runs the ball and is knocked out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Five-yard gain on the play. Mike Peterson coming over to make the stop. The Buffalo Bills, you know, one thing they are managing to do is keep themselves out of third and hugely long. Now, if Rob Johnson does anything but get rid of the football after three steps. They're taking a sack, so they're just stopped. They stopped doing that. They took that whole part of the playbook out of their game plan, and they're just letting Rob Johnson give it or throw it to somebody. Third down now coming up, and the Colts call a timeout, stopping the clock with 1:58 to play in the third quarter. So Jim Mora has to be well pleased, as uh, we mentioned earlier. He said when we met with him yesterday. And I asked him to assess his team overall. He said, uh, we are what we are. We're three and three. Well, they're heading to four and three. Hey, right now, Rob Johnson is a guy who's just trying to survive. He is. I mean, he's, he's taking a pounding. 
from a team who's got its ears back every time he drops back to throw the football, knowing that they're going to get to him. 32 yard line. Loyal Buffalo fans, many, many times, uh, this franchise has led the National Football League in attendance, even though it's one of the smaller markets in the league. Quick out, Eric Moles, they finally get him the ball, and Moles gets ahead for a first down. Corey Bird gets him down along with Peterson, but uh, a quick hitch to Moles gets the first down. Well, it's the most difficult thing in the world to do if you're the offensive coordinator of the Buffalo. Michael Jackson comes to see the playbook that will get the ball to somebody who can make something happen. And you have to do it without relying on an offensive line. It's almost like uh, your back's against the wall and, and you're trying to do something desperate every play. First down. Bob Johnson hands off and the Bills get running room, but they need big plays. Thank you, Jim. A tough uh, stretch for the Jacksonville Jags. Start, start of the season 2-0. They've since lost four straight. Hand off to Travis Henry. And good defense. Corey Bird, a rookie from Virginia Tech, a third round draft choice. He's making a lot of plays at safety. Now you can kind of see that Travis Henry is starting to try and do some things he shouldn't do. He had Jay Remersma in front of him on this play. Watch here as they come across to the top of your screen. He needs to follow Jay Remersma. When you get out there and you want to make a big play, you just become a little bit impatient. Patient. He cuts it back a little too quickly and runs right into the pursuit. And the pursuit stops him, uh, bringing up a third down and seven play. The book on the Colts, the way to keep that offense off the field is to run the ball against their defense, but the Bills haven't been able to do that consistently. Here's Jay Reamers putting his head down, and he dives ahead and is very close to a first down. He's going to be just short of it. And that'll do it for three quarters of play. With the Colts leading 24 to 7, we'll return after this word from your local station. Don Crickey with Steve Tasker back at Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Stadium. Ralph Wilson, the man who uh, brought the Bills to Buffalo as part of the American Football League in 1960, and now he sees his Bills lining up on fourth down and less than a yard. Bills are uh, five of eight on fourth down conversions. And they're not going to get this one. It doesn't. Let's see where the spot is. Linesman, can, they're not going to be close. No gain. Travis Henry runs, and Rob Morris, Rob Morris makes the play on defense. He fills and stuffs. The Buffalo Bills today, they've seen their quarterback sacked six times. He's fumbled twice, leading to 10 cold points. The Bills have a field goal attempt blocked. And they have only 37 net yards passing. Not their day. The Indianapolis Colts holding to a 24-7 lead here early in the fourth quarter. The Colts uh, looking to go over 500 to get to four and three. This is their third game in the last 15 days. Will be uh, three straight wins if they win it. Here's a handoff and Rhodes finds a way to get some yards. He's Rhodes down to the 45 the yard line. Colts now setting up at their leisure, looking to run clock with a 24 to 7 lead. Manning takes a look, lost the ball nicely to Marvin Harrison. And Harrison working in the middle of the Bills defense where people can get hurt. Nonetheless, he makes the grab and gets ahead for yardage. Foreman and Spoon tackled him. You see, this yards. is a play they ran a little earlier, and Marvin Harrison just coming open underneath, giving the ball, hope he can make one guy miss and get a big play. Other than that, just get down, and after these last two plays, the Colts have run the ball 26 times in this game, and they've thrown it for 26 times. And that's a sign, a statistic of a team that's in the lead. Marvin Harrison now at 43 catches for the year. Seven for touchdowns, no scoring catches today. A hitch, Wilkins coming across. Those kind of dangerous plays, but I guess when you execute as well as the Colts have been, you run them. And this is something the Colts do a lot of. You have this when you have receivers who are very good after the catch. Peyton Manning just throws it out as quick as he can get it there. Everybody knows when the ball's coming out there, he tries it. They run interference out there as quickly as they can. 
And if one guy can miss a tackle on a play like this, it goes for a big play. And that's why the Colts are so good at it, because they have guys who are great runners with the football as wide receivers. Here is the setup on first down and 10. Manning methodically again he goes to a Dominique Rhodes and he doesn't get much good defensive play again by Bryce, Bryce Fisher the Air Force Academy standout who's getting better game by game this is the last meeting between the Colts and the Bills in the division with the new AFC realignment starting next season the Colts will go to the uh, AFC South with the Titans these two teams don't meet again until 2003 after meeting twice a year for a long long time. They get an expansion team on their schedule twice next year. The new Houston team. 2003 is the next time the hookup, huh? That's exactly that's what I heard. After playing uh, twice a year for all these years, Manning steps in. Has a problem. He's going to be sacked all the way back at the 45-yard line. Jay Foreman gets him. The Patriots and the Falcons are doing battle today down in Atlanta. For more on that, here's Jim. Well, it's not going the Falcons' way, I can tell you that, Don. Tom Brady here with his third touchdown pass of the day. A fortuitous bounce into the arms of Troy Brown. 44-yard touchdown. Michael Vick has come in replacing Chris Chandler, and he's got the Falcons down inside the 10. Let's go back to you. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Tom Brady, there's a rising star drafted in the sixth round out of Michigan. Fortuitous bounce is the understatement of the day. That was more than just a fortuitous bounce for a touchdown. That was a room service <laughs> bounce. 11 26 to go. Timeout on the field, and the Colts are going to talk it over. They have this game well in command. The Buffalo fans, loyalty is their strong suit as they uh, still. Hanging in here, hoping for something to uh, happen positively for their Bills. But Manning and his offense have controlled this game. And the defense of the Colts has really stood tall also today. Rank 27th coming in. They didn't like it. And they're making amends now, and they're going to move up in the defensive rankings. Manning fires downfield. Beautifully thrown ball. Right on target. And Wilkins comes down with the ball. Terrence Wilkins ahead for a gain of 31 yards. The Colts have a third and long, 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 long. Terrence Wilkins takes his time, finally gets to the point where it's a first down if he catches it. Peyton Manning has the arm to get there. Peyton Manning standing back there has plenty of time to let these routes develop. Terrence Wilkins back into the game after being out for a while with an injury. Gain actually 21 yards as they spot the ball just inside the 25 yard line. Manning takes a look. Here comes the rushers. Screens it off, dumps it off to Marcus Pollard. And he is out of bounds at about the 23 yard line. Phil Hansen runs him out. And that's a play that went south for the Colts. And that's how good this offense is. Peyton Manning had no chance to go anywhere with that. Marcus Pollard just stepped out. After pass protecting, he said, here, throw it to me, and I'll get what I can get. And now, instead of second and 15, it's now second and 10, and they're back in business. Hey, Manning, now Steve has thrown the ball 26 times. He's completed 17 for 199 yards and a touchdown. Rhodes, starting for the injured Edgerin James, has run 24 times for 79 yards, and he's caught four passes for 45 more. He's the lone back. Manning standing in. Here comes the rush. Manning turns the corner and dumps it off as he gets outside the tackle box. People would ask, and it's certainly a valid question, why is Manning still in there? Because that's their philosophy. The game in hand, he'll play every down. Now, he does not miss any snaps for the Indianapolis Colts. He didn't as a rookie when he was trying to learn what it took to be an NFL player, and he does it now, now that he's one of the probably the top three quarterbacks in the National Football League. He doesn't come out of ball games, and I think that's the way Jim Moore likes it. Well, last year, uh, they picked the Colts through the ball in 2000 season 571 times. Manning made every throw. And there's Mark Rippon, his backup, 38 years old, a former Super Bowl MVP with the Redskins. Came out of retirement, handoff on third down and 10. They run the ball into field goal position, and they'll send out their kicker as uh, Dominique Rhodes is taken down. 
Mark Rippon MVP of Super Bowl 26 when the uh, Redskins if you'll excuse me well, Steve beat the Bills 37 to 24. Don't remind me. And I'll tell you what though that the team that Mark Rippon was on Jack, in all the years I played football and as a observed football that was the best team yeah, I ever laid that. eyes on. They were the be absolute best team I have ever seen. 41 yard field goal attempt by Mike Vanderjack with the wind at his back. Kick is driven up and through. And the Colts continue to put up points as they build their lead now to 27 to 7. A great day for Manny and the Colts. Mark Rippon and uh, Peyton Manning, the two QBs on the sideline, um, they said Rippon in the preseason when he came in, he just moved the team right down the field. He didn't lost anything. But Manning's taking every snap. There is the kick return by Nate Clements, who's run back a punt for a touchdown today from 66 yards away. There's a fumble on that play. Colt signal they have, and we'll see if the official concurs. And they do. The official on the far side signaling first down Colts. Third Buffalo turnover, and the Colts take over the ball. Jim Mora, he didn't, uh, I don't think, foresee yeah. this could have a day he's yesterday. Really watch his Nate Clem is coming up in. He's contending that he was down. Ooh, twisted his ankle. He's down before that ball comes out. They're going to, if they're smart, they'll replay this and appeal this decision. And Manning's going to try and quick snap this. There's the flag. Oh, there's the flag right there. Yep, Greg Williams through there. The red flag out signal he wants a replay. Yeah, now the Buffalo Bills have not had good luck this year with appeals. They have not won a single one. This Buffalo may be their first. Challenging the ruling on the field. That is the fumble. And this is a good challenge as we've seen. Uh, that's not a good picture with the, the first picture we had obviously showed that Nate Clemens knee was down. Here's the good angle. Watch. His left knee, you see he twists his ankle, he's down and the ball is still there and the ground actually causes the fumble as well. And no question, Steve, Buffalo's not good, done well challenging. Yeah, they have five challenges and they've lost four of them. There's his knee down right there, no question about it. Buffalo's gonna keep possession of this football, which is really the only good thing that's happened to them the entire game. And both of them, have been, well, two, the second thing, and both of them have been for Nate Clemens. One was the touchdown return on the punt, and now he gets the break on the replay, showing that he didn't fumble that football. Art McNally, the famed uh, NFL referee, has been with the league now for 43 years. Uh, one of the people in the press box for the NFL is uh, Jim Moore, waits to see the outcome. He never expected this kind of a day. He was a little bit discouraged, I think, even though they'd come off a win over Kansas City because they've been giving up a lot of big plays and Vic Fangio their defensive coordinator all the things he wanted to do today defensively they've done number one limit big plays number two stop Rob Johnson from any runs well they've stopped the Buffalo offense from doing anything and uh, you're right that this team and the Colts you can kind of recognize when a team is on all cylinders because they really respect the teams they're playing and they come in knowing that they've got to play well to win because it's a tough league they play in. And right there, you see one last look. That would seem to definitely have been out after his knee was down. Yeah, exactly. And watch here. You'll see his left knee. And right there, his ankle rolls right there. Knee down. Knee down. Ball is still right up in here. The ball is still tucked away. So that. This new replay systems really work well. They get it done fast. Get a lot of different looks. The referee, Walt Coleman, comes over. I got one question for you. Why, why is he still looking in the visor when all of us have seen it? I mean, they've got all the loop views we do. What's he looking at? It's called being certain. I guess. But to Greg Williams and the two coaches, oh boy, different days for them. Greg Williams' team definitely taking a big step back today. You know, that's too bad, too, because this is a Buffalo team that you could feel was just starting to get its feet under them. There's new systems on both sides of the ball, a whole new coaching staff, a new front office, a bunch of new players, and they finally felt like they were starting to become a team, and yet today they show up at home and have really, really played bad. Right here's the knee down. The ball is right there, still in. No question about it that this this play is going to go. The, play, the runner's knee was down. Is down by contact. It'll be first down for Buffalo. Buffalo will not be charged. A timeout. 
First time this year the Bills have won a, a challenge. Previous four that was overruled are upheld and they lost the timeout. You, you can see there, that's when the fumble happened. You can see the frustration written on Greg Williams' face. Yeah, it doesn't get any easier for the Bills. They go to New England next week and meet a hot young quarterback in Tom Brady. And the Colts have a huge game next week. They'll go against the team that was the divisional leader at the start of this day, the Miami Dolphins, at the RCA Dome. And the Colts, an indoor team, playing very well in the outdoors here in western New York in Buffalo. You never know when you see those schedules come out, Don, just what the weather's going to be like at this time of year. Yeah, they got a break. There's a throw and a catch coming out of the backfield and getting ahead is a Larry Centers. The Jaguars and the Titans changing the scoreboard here against Jim Nance. Two teams are struggling in Tennessee. Jacksonville and the Titans both desperately needing this game. Frank Moreau up the middle to give the Jags the lead back at 24-21. 2.45 to play. Back to you. Thank you, Jim. Here now we come back to live action. A throw and a catch over the middle. Coming down with the ball is the rookie from Ohio State, Reggie Germany, who had four catches on opening day. But uh, Idris Bashir makes the tackle after an 18 yard gain on the play. And now the Bills go no huddling. You know, Don, when you're a game like this, it may be out of control, but you know, you always want to think about being, making yourself a better football team next week. And this is good drill to give them a chance to go no huddle against a team that they have uh, not played well against. Mark Thomas, Mark Thomas makes the stop. A big uh, factor in this game is the, uh, the mistake-free aspect of the Colts play, uh, Steve. There's no turnovers by them. Well, that's one of the crucial things in any good football game. But, you know, the Bills have, have suffered not only from that and the, and the total yardage, well, but they've also suffered from their own mistakes and their inability to stop the Colt defense. You see all the yards they had been giving up. They really shut it down today. Here's Rob Johnson. He only gets so long, and then you have to throw it. And he throws it errantly in the direction of Remersma. And this Colt defense, and we showed the graphic earlier, they're, they're ranked in the bottom five in almost every statistical category. But today, you know, they went from 359 a game to only 154 today against Buffalo. And that's got to give them a boost of confidence. Now, whether that's the reality of the situation or whether they're playing a team that is struggling desperately, it doesn't matter. They don't care. They'll take it anytime they can get it. Coming into this game, as you know, Steve, the opponents have averaged 31 points a game against the Colts. Today, the Bills with only seven. Throw and a catch on the sideline, but a good defensive play on third and ten, and there's virtually no gain as Jay Remersma makes the catch. There is a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, this is going to be a hold on Marcus Sullivan. Starting the day, the Colts had allowed 183 points in their first six games. That's the most points allowed in the NFL. So holding, holding, 74, offense, penalties decline, fourth down. As Marcus Sullivan is... You'll watch here as Marcus Washington comes in off the corner and Sullivan just hog ties him right there and pulls him to the ground. But you're right, Don. This is a team that give, has given up a lot of points. Had the Colts as Marcus Sullivan there in the penalty. But the Colts defense, I, as I said earlier, they're always playing against a desperate offensive team. Yeah, they are. They put up a lot of points. Uh, Colt defense has not allowed any points today. The seven points they scored, the Bills, of course, came on the special teams play by their punt returner, and then the extra point. Johnson, off target, is on the deck when he watches the ball carry him in incomplete, shooting at Peerless Price. So the Colts had a great day on both sides of the ball with 7.08 to go. Who was the best? I think Brian Mitchell. Really? Yeah, I... Other guys may make a bigger play here and there, but every time he touched the ball, he was going to hurt you. Well, Got to go with that, then. I'll vote for Brian Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, my, my vote counts for two, then. Peyton Manning still running the offense, looking to make checks. So he looks at the defense, and here is Rhodes. Here's a guy that worked so hard to get an NFL job. And He's going to have one, a seven yard gain on that play. Coming up next, the second game of our CBS doubleheader. Two of the surprise teams of the league, the Browns and the Bears, hooking up at Soldier Field in Chicago. 
Cleveland coming off a bye week so Butch Davis had an extra week to prepare for that great Chicago defense. People were doing a countdown and Dick Chiron in Chicago. When would he be fired before the season? Well, right now, he's a leader for Coach of the Year on it. Yeah, they may name a street after him. That'll be some game. The Bears. The Bears, and here is Peyton Manning. A handoff to Dominique Rhodes, and he is down to the 42 yard line as the Colts methodically run the ball and run clock. A Foreman on the tackle. Well, you got, I think the Colts have got to be happy with the way Dominique Rhodes has played. I mean, he's run the ball very well, and I spoke to Bill Poling in the tunnel before the game, and the one thing that concerned them about Rose was he sometimes has trouble holding on to the football. They were concerned that maybe he would fumble the ball away. There's been none of that today. He has been solid as a rock and then some. You see, as far as rushing numbers there, Steve, those are career highs for Dominique Rhodes, rookie runner. Well, it's got to be a good feeling for a coaching staff to know that the Edger and James can take a Sunday off with it. Injury, not a serious one. And this guy comes in and they don't miss a beat. Rhodes again runs the ball. Dominique Rhodes continues to build his numbers. He's also caught the four passes for 45 yards and now run for 85 yards. You saw there, Edger and James. How smart do they look keeping him out of the lineup today? I mean, it, there was a question mark as to whether he was going to play or not. He tried to practice Friday and couldn't. Now he gets an extra week and lots of days of rest without worrying about it. And, and the Colts can breathe a sigh of relief as well. When we talked to Jim Moore about it last night, uh, Jim Moore said, well, he's here and his gear is here. Maybe he'll have a miraculous recovery, but right now, doesn't look like he's going to go. Here's the punt by Hunter Smith at downfield to Peerless Price. He lets it carry him into the end zone for a touchback. So the Bills will try again with 4.46 left to play. Good live performance today by the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> As they get set to go home to play the Miami Dolphins next weekend. Well, that's the game of the week right now. Those two teams are going to be battling. Johnson going on the run, and uh, Johnson uh, comes into the wrong side of Remiersman. And Johnson, as you see, hammered as he delivers the ball. And that, that's that's typical of the day right there. Johnson just getting rid of it, trying to give him some sort of self, some sort of chance to complete a, a pass. But ending up in the grasp of the defender before he can even release, and you see there, bang, and that hurts, Don. Getting caught in midair. And you see there, and there's a guy who's taken more than his share of hits today and in the weeks preceding this one. Those numbers. Sacked six times, knocked down six other times. He stands in, ball is tipped, and wisely the ball is slapped down by Larry Center, so it's not a they couldn't Center. intercept it. And this is a, a time of the game right now where the Colts would like the clock to just have a running clock, just get this one over with. And the Bills, I think right now they're showing the fact that they'd kind of like the clock to run too. Their centers are slapping it down, and that brings up third down and 10. Ball position down the 20 yard line. Multiple wide receivers in the game. Johnson with the deep drop. Here comes the rushers. He's hit again. Releases it to Larry Centers. As Johnson's almost a tackling dummy out that time. Uh, Mark Thomas coming unimpeded. Got a clean shot on him. Don, if this were playground football, we'd have to choose up sides again and start over. This is not fair. I mean, the, the Buffalo Bills are outmatched. You see there, Rob Johnson is the guy who's taking the brunt of the punishment. Well, there's no question at this juncture, these young tackles are not ready to play in the NFL, and they could lose a quarterback while they're learning. Punt hit downfield. Coming up on the ball, and letting it hop is Wilkins. Might have touched a Colt. The official said it did. So the Bills get the ball, their first big play of the game. But far too little, far too late with 350 to go and down 27 to 7. Intelligent play by Chris Watson as he pushed the guy who was blocking him towards the ball that was bouncing and got it to bang off his leg and then jumped on it. Smart play by Chris Watson. Watch as they're engaged right at the bottom of your screen. He sees the ball bounce and then pushes the defender right into the ball and it bounces off his back leg and he jumps on it. Smart play. So now the ball position at the 31 yard line. 
Bills break the huddle, looking to get into the end zone for the first time today on offense. They get their seven points on a 66-yard punt return by the rookie, Nate Clements. Johnson, here is Price, looking at the defense, kind of short arms the ball. The executive producers of the NFL on CBS are Sean McManus and Terry Eward. The coordinating director is Larry Cavalina. Today's game was produced by Jim Rickoff and directed by Kathy Barreto. The senior producer of the NFL today is Eric Mann and is directed by Bob Matina. The coordinating producer of CBS Sports is Harold Bryant. The associate director of today's game was Sean Gertzikoff. The broadcast associate, Jason Ross, and the technical manager, Dan Barron. The men and women of CBS Sports, we thank them all for their continued good work bringing NFL football to you. Here's a throw, Remus now, touchdown, Bills. 27 yard touchdown throw. And the Bills offense finally gets in the end zone. Rob Johnson, I know, is thinking to himself as he walks off, wow, wouldn't it be nice if I could throw the football like that every time and not have to end up on my back? Oh, he's been on his back. He's taken some shots today. He has spent his, the whole day running for his life. It's almost a cliche, but it's really the truth. The offensive line of the Buffalo Bills is struggling mightily, and it's not going to get any better. Well, the left tackle they think is going to be good down the line. Marcus Sullivan is really lost out there. He just is not ready for NFL pass rushers to block him. So with 3.39 left to play, the Bills will set up now for an onside kick attempt. Trailing by 13 points. Well, Jay Remersman, who spent most of the day trying to help pass protect, ends up finally getting a free release down the football field, and Rob Johnson steps back and throws it. And that's why Jay Remersma is hasn't been as productive this year as he as he would like to be just because of the fact that his offensive line has forced him to pass protect rather than do this and catch footballs. Good play by Jay Remersma who makes his second touchdown catch of the year is the the fifth touchdown throw by Rob Johnson this year. And you said it Don you can bet here as you see Johnson's numbers and that that doesn't really tell the story right there. I mean, it has been a physical punishing day for Rob Johnson at quarterback. I mean, every day is a physical yeah, punishing day. And he hung in there. He hung in there. Now, as, you know, as is right, the Bills are going to attempt a, an onside kick, and they have both their place kickers on the field. Yeah, we watched this on Friday at practice. They line up both their kickers, almost like a soccer kick. But it's a free kick that you don't know who's going to take it. Colts are lining up, loading up right, and it is kicked downfield by Mormon, and it comes out of bounds, so the Colts will get the ball in very, very good field position. Yeah, they're going to have to, they'll kick this again because nobody touched it. Coming up next, the second game of the doubleheader, the Browns and the Bears at Chicago or Kansas City at San Diego. It's Greg Williams getting ready to bring his Bills Back to the practice. Where do you start trying to get this thing ready for a game against the Patriots, a rising team? Well, we've talked about this. There are two there are team meetings every morning in the National Football League. Everybody comes together as a team before they break up. And the most important meetings of the week are the one on Monday morning after the game and the one Saturday night before the game. And Monday morning, every head coach in the league, whether they win or lose, has to come in and have something positive to say to his team and get them on the right track. It's going to be harder tomorrow for Greg Williams than it is for Jim Mora. Let's watch here now, see if they go with the same guy, Mormon kicking, if they go to the other side. Arians also getting, and Arians kicks it this time, boots it high, and the ball is field beautifully at the 45-yard line. So there the Colts will have it first down and 10. See there, Jeff Burris, a former first round draft pick of the Buffalo Bills. Former Notre Dame player who is like one of those corners I told you about, Don. He plays so good that he'll never get any interceptions because they can't throw the ball to a guy who's covered. Yeah, that's right. He was a number one draft choice of the uh, Buffalo Bills, and then uh, he went on as an unrestricted free agent to the Colts on a huge contract. And he's been a skilled defender for his eight years in the league now. Dominic Rhodes ready to run the ball. 
Taking uh, the boy, he's taking some shots. But he loves it. Happy to be out there. Yeah, the Indianapolis Colts are a team who's now, you know, the guys are picked by Bill Polian and Jim Mora, and there's Tom Moore as the offensive coordinator. Buffalo Bill is knocked out cold there. We can't spot the number. Bills are averaging today only 3.2 average uh, per pass play. 33 pass plays, just 106 net passing yards. Credit to the Colts. Yeah, the Colts are a team that, you know, a few years ago when they decided to go with a new front office and hired Bill Polian, as you see here, the player's still down. That wasn't a bad move, hiring no, Bill Polian. Not at all, and you'll see. Boy, there's a shot. Right there. Right here. That's Tyrone Robertson. It's hard, difficult to see what the injury might have been. Dominic Rhodes, he took a really a unbelievable shot. That's Ty this guy, Tyrone Robertson, a free agent out of uh, Heinz Community College. He has played a terrific game today. He, in the first half, he was consistently putting pressure on Manning. Let's see if he can. You know, there you see him, 6'4", 285. And You're going to hear more about this guy. Yeah, you are. I mean, he's a good player. And the problem, you know, you know when they got a good guy that's going to play well, there's no room for projects in the NFL. If a guy's out there, he's got to make it happen in his first year because in his second year, they're going to be trying to get rid of him because they don't have time to wait on him. He really took a shot. Yeah, he did. You can tell he's in some distress right there. Big Tyrone knows he's leaving the field, but he knows this isn't the way you want to go off. That's exactly right. He just took a hard boy in the first half though. I he was really jumped out at you the way he, he really was getting pressure played well He's one of the few bright spots in a team that was struggling on both sides of the ball Miami playing very well again up on Carolina Green Bay and Tampa Bay locked in a good one Lambeau field And the Giants have rallied back now to tie Dallas so they tell you the Cowboys after it Horrendous start, a rising team. And the Colts back on track. Back to Rhodes. And he talked, uh, when you talked to some of the Colts people, Steve, as you were mentioning earlier, they talked about he has had a, some fumbling difficulties, but I'll tell you, he's not risking the ball. He's really valuing that ball with both arms on it. One of the things that happens, this Colts team is an indoor team, but their remaining schedule, they've got nine games after today. Instead, third down, Colts need four. And he hands off to Rhodes, and he is uh, breaks tackles, gets a first down and more, as he is down to the 30-yard line and thrown back. Another hard run. This one good for eight yards on third down and four. Rivera's Tillman and Nate Clements bring him down. But Dominique Rhodes continues to deliver the goods. He's now carried the ball 31 times for 99 yards. And he's caught four passes for 45 more. And as Baltimore takes a timeout, it gives us a chance to talk about that team who, you know, this is a team that for a lot of years was down. And now with Bill Polian and Jim Mora and a new regime, they've started to pick players in a different way. They pick guys that they can count on. And Peyton Manning is a perfect example of that, a guy who's going to work hard. You don't have to keep tabs on guys who are true professionals and the Colts more so than a lot of teams have guys that know how to work without being prodded. 
and it shows on the football field. This is a well-disciplined team. And, and I, I've said Baltimore, but I meant it obviously meant the Indianapolis Colts, but this is a team that is you know, it's full of guys that have character. No question. And Vic Fangio, he was a little on edge yesterday when he talked about his defense being ranked 27th. He said his defense uh, is giving up some rushing yards, but a lot of it was on reverses. And I think this defense and the time they had off since the Thursday night game at Kansas City really got together. And they played a very strong game against the Bills. Constant pressure on the quarterback. And they have not allowed big plays. That's first and foremost. The one touchdown throw uh, came very late. There is a. Fangio with the baseball hat out in the middle. Right there. He was with the uh, Carolina Panthers also. And I think he was also with Jim Moore when Moore was the head coach of New Orleans. And this is a, a, a team that is really, I mean, they've had ups and downs this year. And, and obviously today is a big up, especially the fact that Edger and James is not in the lineup. This is a team that's been inconsistent, and we asked more about it. He said, well, you know, that's the NFL these days, and we're going to have to ride out some of these slumps that we fall into. But now with nine games to go after today, this is a team, I think, that is on the verge of staying consistently good. And another uh, good omen for the Colts, Steve, and that is that uh, Peyton Manning has now gone three straight games without an interception. Indianapolis Colts have had a running back rush for 100-plus yards in six of seven games this season. The other five times was, of course, uh, Edger and James. Man, you have to harken back to what he was saying about Dominique Rosa. This is a kid that just wanted to win a job in the NFL. Street free agent. Did everything he could, studied nonstop, never stopped asking questions. And he's going to be in the NFL maybe for a long time, a rookie. You know, you, know, you talk about that, and the thing that when, when young kids are trying to see what it takes to be an NFL player. One of the things they forget, yeah, they got to work hard physically, but it's more about working hard mentally. The NFL is a mental game, not so much physical. Welcome back to Western New York, where the Colts are well in command, 27 to 14. Don Crickey with Steve Tasker in the first win this season. The Colts over the Bills. Indianapolis had 555 yards offense today, 304. But an even more dominant margin. Yeah, well, if there's one thing the Buffalo Bills did succeed at today, and that's being a confidence boost for the Indianapolis Colts. Manning with two minutes left to play. Setting his team in that Rose. He can't wait to get the ball again. He gets it. Dominique Rhodes. A tough inside runner. They were all lauding his. He's not a real big guy, but he will take it at tacklers and really shoot into those inside gaps. And they were concerned that his style of running was going to be a lot different than Edger and James, but I don't think anybody's noticed. So the game clock now winds down to 128 left to play. Rhodes continues to build his numbers 34 carries 100 yards four catches 45 yards and Manning with a workman like day at quarterback 27 throws 17 completions 199 yards and one touchdown and here's Vanderjack who's made both his field goal attempts first there's a timeout called on uh, the field as we have uh, mind you it's a double header day on CBS a big second game at the surprising Browns under first year coach Butch Davis against the even more surprising Chicago Bears with the great middle linebacker Brian Urlacher who the whole thing revolves around. Yeah you know you see those two games coming up uh, at the you know in the second half of the double header and they're typical of what the good teams are doing this year more so than even the Indianapolis Colts are. The good teams are doing it with defense. I mean they're doing it with a with a defense that keeps them in the game no matter who they're playing no matter what happens good or bad teams have a difficult time scoring and that gives all those offenses a chance to catch their breath and score some points and just stay close. If you're a good defense your offense is only one mistake away from winning it for you. Well the Bills will be back to play another day but uh, right now they're going to be looking at a big deficit when they leave the field today as Vanderjack a 47 yard field goal attempt he spins it up. And he's right there again. So Vanderjack, three of three on the day. He is for the season, 
11 of 15. And most importantly, he's hit one of 150 plus. He can drill it from way out. He's hit today from 34, 41, and 47 yards. And another bill a bit shaken up. Linebacker Keith Newman. There's a happy guy there, Don. It, it couldn't have gone better for him today. Well, they got to put the 24 hour rule in. It's as <laughs> win or lose. You have 24 hours to celebrate or commiserate. And then you got to think about the next group coming in. And the next group is a good one. The divisional leaders, the Dolphins, will be heading into Indianapolis. And you know, as happy as Dominique Rhodes is today, you know, it's also a huge sigh of relief for himself. It's the first time that he knows for sure that he belongs in the National Football League. And I'll tell you what, Don, nothing makes you sleep better than that. You know, at halftime, I was talking with Bill Polian, Stephen, about all the very play calls that the, the Colts have. He said a lot of it is really the same plays, but we run them from different formations. Here is the uh, return downfield by Avion Black. And Avion gets the ball out to about the 31 yard line. So the Bills with a minute left to play will come out firing. Rob Johnson still hanging in there. Johnson for the day 13 of 27 for 130 yards in the one late touchdown throw to Remiersma. And you get the feeling if Rob Johnson survives not only this game but the rest of the season he deserves the NFL Tough Man Award. Yeah. Because he's going to get hammered for a long time until they get there until they get their uh, offensive line put together. And there's the real numbers right there. Knocked down six, sack six, and 11 hurries. That's 23 plays that he's ended up on his back. Ball is knocked in the air, and the defensive end was making a threatening move on the ball. Josh Williams tipped the ball, but big Mark Thomas, number 90, thought he could get his hands on it for an interception. So the Bills are realigned now, getting set to head to New England. They'll have a tough time there unless this offense gets better because the Patriots can score with Tom Brady. Yeah, but Tom Brady is a guy who's still playing well. Three touchdown passes the last time we checked today. And they won the game 24 10. Throw on the flank. Larry Centers takes it out of bounds on a second down and 10 play, and that stops the clock with. 49 seconds left to play. Colts in command 30 to 14. Jeff Burris knocks him out of bounds. You know, it's just important at this time of the game for both these teams just to keep battling. Play hard. Be perfect in your assignments. Make sure you stay disciplined because this is the time of the game when you know crazy things can happen. And you always hear guys, especially done in the NFL, that they get hurt as the last play of the game or as the last play I was going to be in or the last play of practice when something bad happens. There's a throw and the ball is threaded in to Peerless Price as he gets the ball down to the 45 yard line. And the uh, Bills quickly going into a line without a huddle after that 17 yard gain. Colts drop their safeties way back. And now Walt Coleman, the referee, blows the whistle and stops play. There's Rob Johnson just spiking the ball there to stop the clock. And 32 seconds left. Of course, all hope is gone for the Bills. Bills go to one and six on the year, so they're not going to be a playoff team. It's not going to happen. And the Colts right back on track with their third straight win. A doubleheader game of the Browns and the Bears at Soldier Field in Chicago. Johnson dumps it off to centers as he heads straight ahead. Ives down inside the 40 to the 37 yard line. And the clock continues to tick on down. Bills are out of timeouts. Jim Mora seeing his team get back on track from after some more masterful play by his quarterback, Manning. Didn't have his huge numbers today, but he made some huge plays. Not the least of which is 33 yard run for a touchdown. And that's the game. That's the game, and a good one for the Colts. Not good at all for the Bills. Morrow with reason to celebrate on this win 30 to 14 the Colts win the game now for Steve Tasker this is Don Cricky saying so long from Ralph Ralph Wilson Stadium the NFL on CBS continues with game two of our doubleheader next final score the Colts 30 and the Bills 14 you've been watching the NFL on CBS thanks for joining us